Okay, we're live on YouTube now. Okay, thank you. Welcome back to the afternoon session of the November 10th Landmarks Preservation Commission public hearing and public meeting. We are currently in the uh, a public hearing session reviewing applications for work on designated properties and we are beginning with item number seven. This meeting is being live streamed on YouTube and if you wish to watch the proceedings you may do so on our channel on YouTube um, and if you wish to participate participate in the hearing you may join the meeting and the meeting information is listed on the screen at the beginning of each item and is also on our agenda. And with that, I will turn it over to the Director of Preservation, Corey Harala, to take us through the afternoon agenda. Thanks, Sarah. We're going to pause still for just a moment. Uh, I can see that we're waiting on the applicants to uh, okay. join the meeting, but expect them very soon. Okay, I see at least one of them is in here. So I'll go ahead and read the item into the record and hopefully everyone will be all set. Uh, so the first item after lunch is item number seven, LPC 20-09935, an application for a certificate of appropriateness in the borough of Manhattan, block 404, lot 23, 538 East 11th Street, the free public baths of the city of New York, East 11th Street bath, individual landmark. A neo-Italian Renaissance style building designed by Arnold W. Brunner and built in 1904 to 05. The application is to alter the facade. Thank you, commissioners. The applicants have joined the hearing. Uh, we are just coordinating on the slides. So just one moment. Okay. Okay, you now have control of the slides. If you can just uh, click to advance and um, state your name for the record and you may begin. <coughs> and do remember to unmute yourself if you're trying to speak. Uh, just unmute yourself and then state your name. Um, <clears throat> hi, Shea Murdoch, Murdoch Sullivan Architects. Good afternoon. I have May from May Carino from my office, who I believe was going to be controlling the slides. Hi, good afternoon. I'm May Carino. I could control the slides if you provide me access. Uh, yeah, you just have to click on this slide and then you can advance. There you go. I see. Okay. Oh, I got it. I'm ready, Shay. Okay, yep. So, uh, yeah, this is 538, uh, 540 East 11th Street on the Lower East Side, located between Avenue A and B, I believe. So we can go to the next slide. <clears throat> um, okay, so this is, uh, as mentioned, this is the free public bath of the city of New York, designed by Arnold um, Bruner and built in um, 1904, 1905 in a new Italian Renaissance style. Um, and these are exist these are photographs of the existing facade and the front gates and stoop um, in its current configuration. This was designated as an individual landmark in 2007 and at the time, the historic aspects of the building were the obviously the facade itself, the neo italian facade, the nautical themes, the balustrated parapet that sits above the medallion cornice, and the frieze bearing the name of the uh, building. The non-historic features of the building were obviously things that uh, were done in the original conversion, we believe, to a, from a public bath, or I'm not sure of the history prior to the 1996 conversion, but in the mid nineties, it was converted to a single family residence. And at that time, um, the, well, what exists now 
was what we discovered was in those plans from 96. So best we can tell, this is what's been there since 96. So it included the four lanterns. These are the non-historical components of it. The four lanterns on the front, the gates themselves, the stoop along the, the central bay. The central bay is now the primary residential access through the into the building. And, and there's a visible bulkhead on the on the roof that we're addressing that is also um, not historic to the building. Um, <clears throat> so part of what we're uh, proposing is, is a full facade restoration um, program that we're going to work with staff. You can see there's algae, there's mildew, there's some deterioration of the limestone, the Indiana limestone. Um, there is the uh, bulkhead, which is visible. And in the 90s, they had used a blue inexpensive mosaic tile as a sort of theme throughout both the interior vestibule and obviously the bulkhead and some other areas in the residence that are not visible. Um, so our proposal is to remove the gates and replace the gates and infill those arches with new window guards and gates, uh, replace the stoop, replace the four lanterns and enlarge the interior mezzanine, which, which currently uh, is, is sort of a double height space out to the rear of the facade to, to um, the owner has a desire, they need more space. Um, so we're gonna be enlarging that mezzanine to the back of the facade. Um, over the years, uh, you know, there's been patchwork on the on the limestone. So we're going to be doing as well. There's been some patchwork. There's a granite base. So we're going to be restoring all of that as part of this um, facade improvement program. Uh, these are the original tax photos from I want to say the 40s. When it was still a public bath, you had the men's and women's entrances on either side with the stoops there. Those have all since been removed. Um, but we did look at that facade and we started to look at some of the geometry happening in the mullions and the window guards up above. We believe those are window guards, not windows. They're too small for uh, glazing to be happening. If there was glazing behind it, perhaps, but those were in fact window guards on the outside, which we're proposing to replace. So some cursory analysis of the geometry of those windows was sort of the impetus of and paying some homage to that, um, to those mullion configurations in the new facade, in the new gates. <clears throat> okay, so it, what, what the, it's a little uh, difficult to understand. So we're gonna try to explain what's happening behind the facade. So there is currently an exterior vestibule with three entrances, a service ramp on the east side, which goes up, Let's see if the ability to annotate. That is here. There's the primary residential entrance here, which is also leads to an exterior vestibule. And then there is a service ramp that currently leads down to the basement. And the actual line of the interior is a double height uh, aluminum storefront, anodized aluminum storefront that runs in a kind of configuration, something along that. <clears throat> so we're proposing to keep this exterior, but one of the requirements is to provide a service entrance that leads to the elevator. Right now it's very difficult to get to the elevator. So this becomes a, sec a new service entrance that leads up and into the residential elevator. The primary entrance to the residence remains in the center. And this is just a service, steep service ramp to bring things up into the main living, area, living floor. Uh, 
Um, so that that's that's what's and then the second floor is the mezzanine and the mezzanine will extend out now all the way to the back of the facade. It's currently stops here and follows a sort of a jog line there and we will be infilling it out to the back of that facade. Sorry, I'm drawing with a mouse. It's a little difficult. Okay, next slide, Ming. <clears throat> So this is that space right now. This is a double height space. It's got the same mosaic blue tile on three sides. Uh, that's the anodized aluminum. All of that is coming out and being replaced. Now, it's it's minimally visible. We're, we're doing where the gate replacement is a much uh, more closed vertical slat type gate. So this will be only slightly visible from the exterior, but we were asked to include it just to describe what's happening behind the facade where the majority of the work is happening. So we're proposing to replace this, the, remove the blue tile here, remove the blue tile here, remove the blue tile here and replace it with a warmer wood uh, cladding that is consistent really throughout the interior of the residence. So this is more about trying to create some continuity within within the residence. So those areas of blue tile are being replaced here along the east wall, here as you lead down the ramp. And as a slat wall open between the, the ramp that leads down to the basement and the new service ramp to the elevator on the first floor. And all of that is, is minimally visible from the exterior, but, but is, is slightly visible. And the second floor where the blue tile is, if you could go back maybe one slide, that will become interior uh, living space and that would just be sheetrock, uh, most likely interior finish. So that is the existing, the demolition of the old gates, um, the stoop, and this is the proposed. So we're proposing to provide window guards, which pick up on some of the geometry, including the diagonal muntins of the original from the original tax photo but a little bit lighter, um, more in keeping with, this is, this is the only light that they get um, into that residential space. So we've, we've lightened it a little bit, but try to keep a sort of a, a sense of scale and, and weight that is, is we feel is in proportion to this, um, these openings and the scale of this building. So these will be gates, vertical slatted gates open because the interior space behind there is open within the same plane is a window guard that is independent of the windows. The windows are pulled back another six or eight inches to the rear of the masonry facade. So these window guards will read as part of the plane of the, the gate, similar to the gates, I guess, that are there now in terms of them being open. And then the actual glazing will be set back behind that at the floor plate of the new mezzanine. And then additionally, we'll be removing the tile of the, the blue tile on this bulkhead up here and replacing it with a, a zinc panel in the, in the attempt to sort of draw attention away from it, have it blend a little more with, with other bulkhead type construction in New York as a metal cladding. Uh, we will be replacing these four lamps from electric to real gas lanterns, and those were approved by the building department, so those will actually be gas lanterns. And then we'll be redoing this stoop, which is currently, doesn't even meet code for residential entrance. We'll be adding a tread and adding a rail for safety. So these, the, we've removed the gates just for clarity, but these are the window configuration behind those window guards. Just, this is just an enlarged plan of the, of the facade work, which is the window guards are here and the windows are set back behind that and the gates below. 
And that is kind of a section of how that works with the new mezzanine floor plate here, angled back, the window guard out here, and then the actual glazing and interior exterior waterproofing is back here. And there'll be a, this, this will be a metal plate that runs across and around the entire opening, tying both the lower gates and the upper uh, window guards together. Um, and those are currently pushed back from a little bit further from where the existing gates are to, to expose more of this, um, of the limestone on the front facade. So we're pushing that, those openings back as well. We're pushing back the glazing line even further to the interior face of the masonry. So almost two feet back from the front of the masonry. These are the lamps being proposed, replacements of as gas lanterns in the same location. This is the existing stoop. Those, those uh, treads are, um, the owner finds them to be a bit dangerous. We're also going to be doing a full repair, a proper repair of the granite base, along with some of this patched uh, stucco with, uh, with, with the limestone. So we're gonna do a full restoration of the base, including the granite water table and uh, the limestone repair throughout the facade that we'll work with staff on the, the specifics of that. So this is the new sto stoop. The, um, the owner was uh, fond of um, Ralph Lorenz flagship, which is also a limestone building uh, on the Upper East Side, I think in the, in the 70s. So we're, we're picking up on a similar architecture to that where we're rounding out the curve, uh, the, the treads, we're adding an additional tread to bring us out to our maximum 44 inches off the front of the facade and adding a tread so that that's just a safer entrance. And we're adding these black guardrails. Um, and all of the finish of both the windows are steel powder coat windows, as well as the gates and window guards would also match that matte black finish. The treads would be in the limestone with the bull nose and the bull nose uh, curving around the treads, I mean, around the, um, and tying back into the building. So following that. Sorry, May. Right, and these last three are just uh, some renderings of, of the proposed design with, so those are the verticals, vertical slat gates. That is what you will see of the new warm wood on the interior and then the window guards with window behind up above the new lanterns and then the new stoop with the rail. And we just have three views of, of that. I leave anything out, May? No, Shay, you covered everything. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, are, do we have any questions? Commissioner Jefferson, please go ahead. You just have to unmute, yeah. Oops. Just one question. Is the handrail on the facade required by code? The, um, it is not required by code um, because we are rising less than 30 inches. Um, it is a request by the owner um, just for safety and guests coming and, and when, when she, I think she, when her mother comes and things, so you just wanted it to be a little safer to enter, but by code, uh, technically it's, it would not be required. Thank you. Because, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Commissioner Gustafson. Uh, yeah, on on, the, on those handrails, I, I'm I'm trying to figure out uh, what's going on there. Are they freestanding? Are they are they proud of? Uh, are they? You know, they are proud, proud of the stone. And I, if we maybe if we go back, but there would be a bracket there and a bracket there, 
at the where it meets the wall. So I, I, do those brackets show up, May, uh, May on the um, right? So we would bracket it here, here, and then not until you get around the corner. Um, I don't see it that front elevation, but somewhere along here, we would need another bracket. Now we could have them return to the ground if we wanted to have them be independent of the facade. I think it would be, uh, that would be acceptable solution if, if the concern is a connection to the, to the limestone. Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Commissioner Wellington. Uh, yes, could you go into the history and the logic uh, behind uh, converting from electric to gas lantern? Well, that's a <laughs> that is an owner uh, desire to return to the quaint, warm lighting of gas lanterns. Um, so that's something we didn't even know the building department um, allowed, but in fact, they do allow it, and we were able to get that um, at least the gas work approved to put in a true gas lantern. Um, so that's really just a desire for her to have that warm, glowing light of, of a gas lantern. So were you using the existing conduit uh, with new piping or are you doing a brand new drilling? Yeah, so we, have, we are going to be furring out the inside of, so not, and then the only thing is we'll be penetrating the masonry just to deliver it through, through the masonry from behind. May your job erratic. So we'll be coming down here inside, not into the masonry, and we will just be coring through at the locations of the lanterns. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And Commissioner Jefferson. You just have to unmute. Okay. Can you hit the unmute button? Oh, I'm sorry. If you go to the tax photo quickly, um, I just had a question about the lanterns. As you see in the tax photo, the lanterns are in the slot. They're not uh, on the stone itself. And you see that they're lowered. And at some point, I guess in the 90s, they were raised. And if you're replicating it, why not keep them in a the slot? What were they thinking of just putting, not putting them in a the slot? What's, what's your architectural thinking? The, well, okay, there's there's two there's two things to that. One one is the, you know those that that those penetrations were already here, and the 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 second consideration is the entrance. The primary entrance is here, and there is no slot at this location. So we looked at possibly putting them in the slot here and here, but but she was looking for some amount of lighting, even even low lighting as she enters through this being the new entrance. So because those were already in those locations, th that's the main reason we left them there. Uh, okay, thank you. Yes, that's okay. okay. Thank you. All right, and I have a question. I, I know, um, you know, historically, this is a good slide. We can see in the tax photo that the arches contained doors with porticos and windows. And so it was an enclosed space. Now it's open with gates and the proposal is to keep it open. And I guess I, that was the first question is it's that they really wanna keep it open. They wouldn't consider doors that are more evocative or windows that are more evocative of the historic photo or what's the thinking behind keeping it open? They there? love that outdoor space inside the residence. They love coming in and not being walking right in. They've got this area that, that's still outdoors and then you come into the space and people sit out there all the time. I think there's some smokers that might go out there, who knows. Um, so yes, they, they wanted to keep that interior space and not come, it's almost like a, an exterior vestibule. They didn't want you coming right into the, to the residence. It was like, this is a, a bit of breathing room Okay. And they get okay. airflow through there and, and it's, um, you know, so they, they like it. Okay. This, this, and then just a, a follow-up yeah. question at the top of the gates in the rendering, there's sort of a, the, the, a dark solid. Is that the mezzanine floor slab that we're looking at in the rendering? Yeah. 
So this is a heavy bar across here. And I don't know if you can zoom in on that at all, May, but the light gray behind is the floor plate, but we've, we've intentionally pushed that back to not have a solid band across the floor plate. That's right. So the gates are in fact taller, they're up here, but the floor plate is set back and it, it is in this area, but the slats continue across up to this, where the address is written up to this main bar, which separates the gates, has the locking mechanism for the gates, okay. and is the frame of the window guards above. Thank you. All right, Thank commissioners, you. are there any other questions? All right, not seeing any other questions right now. I think we'll move to public testimony. And if you're in the meeting and would like to testify on this item, please raise your hand so we can identify you. And we will start with anyone who signed up in advance first, and then we will get to everyone else. So I will turn it over to Lisa Krasavich to walk us through the testimony. Lisa. Great, thank you. Um, so first, um, starting with the people that signed up, Louisa Winchell. And then just please state your name for the record and you have three minutes. Hello, my name is Louisa Winchell and I represent Village Preservation, 538 to 540 East 11th Street, the former East 11th Street Baths is one of the architectural jewels of the East Village. Set amidst the tenements whose residents it originally served, its monumental Neo-Italian Renaissance style form stands out with a grandeur that contrasts with its humble but critically important intended function. Its arches once boasted beautiful metal grills at the transoms and pedimented entries over the outer openings, which allowed the passerby to see into this once public building. While the current metal gates do little to honor the original design, we feel that the proposed gates and transoms could stand much improvement and in some ways move the building in the wrong direction. The proposed gates have narrower slats than even the current ones and would make the grand entry interior even less visually permeable and more closed off, removing the building further from its original design and spirit. Additionally, the glazing of the transoms is woefully out of place and does nothing to evoke the beautiful metal grills that used to be here. This proposal represents a missed opportunity to improve this individual landmark and we ask that the commission require the applicant to change these features to more fully reflect reflect and respect the history of the building. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next we have Kelly Carroll. And while Kelly's coming in, I'd ask everybody if you want to speak on this item, please raise your hand. If you don't want to speak on this item, please lower your hand. Kelly Carroll, Historic Districts Council. While HDC supports this application, we question the design choice of gas lantern light fixtures for this building. And I did hear the applicant's response, but I'm still going to read what I wrote yesterday. While gas remained popular in residential buildings of this area, we would like to see evidence or hear the rationale in choosing a gas flame to illuminate the facade of this former public building. The designation report is inconclusive on whether any light fixtures were original design features or even when they were placed on the facade. So we are interested to hear the commissioner's discussion of their possible appropriateness. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you, Kelly. Um, next, George Calder Calderaro. George, you just need to unmute yourself and turn on your camera if you choose. Thank you. I'm George Calderaro. I'm chair of the Preservation Committee of the New York Metro Chapter of the Victorian Society in America. The East 11th Street Bath is an important individual landmark, especially striking on this mixed block of altered tenements and new buildings. It would be helpful to have information on the historic floor plan at the first floor and mezzanine. Pulling the mezzanine fenestration forward seems appropriate, assuming it reflects the historic condition. Perhaps the same thing should be done on the first floor. The proposed metal work in the monumental arched opening improves over the existing, but we feel it needs to be better. 
The main horizontal or transom bar should be placed at the spring of the arch as it was originally, not below as it is proposed. The Roman lattice should be in the arch above. The details of the metalwork are not provided in the materials and we fear it will be constructed of flat welded pieces when it should have depth and articulation typical of historic ironwork. The unpainted vertical wood slat uh, wood slab wall cladding behind the gates, essentially now part of the building's exterior seems wrong for this sort of building. A material and design more typical of that would, which would have been seen historically in an entranceway or vestibule, vestibule would be more appropriate. The limestone clad steps are a good solution given the existing entrance configuration, but we fear that the thin stone veneer proposed will not be durable. Finally, the proposed exterior light fixtures are smaller than the historic or existing feature fixtures, and they're too small for this facade. They should not be gas lights unless historic documentation shows otherwise. The Victorian Society enthusiastically supports retention, refurbishment, and replication of authentic gas, gas lighting when appropriate, such as at the Gage and Tolner re Restaurant Interior Landmark, where historic gas fixtures were, after designation, vandalized during conversion to electricity. Whether with or without an LPC permit, we have been unable to ascertain. But at the East 11th Street Bath, built in 1904, well into the electric era, the exterior fixtures should be electric. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And with that, I think that's everybody that's here to speak on this item. Okay, thank you. Rich, do we have any written testimony? We do. We have a, a resolution from Manhattan Community Board 3 recommending approval, but also recommending uh, that an effort should be made along with the proposed changes to existing gates to reference the original pedimented doorways. Okay, thank you. All right, so, um, I, I'd like to turn to Mr. Murdoch and see if you'd like to respond to any of the comments that have been made. Um, I think we can dig into a little more research on the gas lanterns and whether or not they may or may not have been original to the building. We're not we're not 100% sure either. Um, in terms of the, you know, the lattice work, we we were trying to make homage to it, but the, if you if you look at the tax photo, th that level of of weight and density of the of that grading would would essentially prohibit any light from getting in. And this is, this is not a bathhouse, it is a residence and, um, and, and that's their only light uh, on that floor. Uh, so we're trying to balance the, the diagonal lattice and the primary geometry with something that will also bring enough light in to make that, that space habitable. And we do have a light and air requirement there. The pediments, um, the pediments, you know, currently in their current configuration would not be allowed. Um, they extend past the property line um, more than four inches, which isn't allowed. So, and it's not the current, you know, male, female entrance. Uh, it's not a bathhouse anymore. So we want to, we want to respect that, but any attempt at a, that we, we tried, and I, I'll say we did um, to, to bring back a pediment felt contrived and it didn't, it, it just, without, those were revolving doors and we're not, you know, this is not what that is anymore. And so we feel that, you know, the efforts we've made are, are give, give weight and significance to what was there before without replicating it. And I will certainly um, look at increasing the uh, thickness of the treads. I believe those were two and a half inch, but if they were shown thinner, um, we would we would increase the the uh, tread and risers of those of the new stoop. I think that was another comment. Sorry, you muted. I apologize. 
So I was wondering why no one was answering me. <laughs> so Commissioner Goldblum, I think you had a question. Yeah, just for Mark, I wanted to know what, um, how this works in relationship to the glazing and the uh, spandrel at the second floor and where does the 18 inches that we usually require start? Does it start at the face of the grate, the face of the facade? What's our jurisdiction related to the applicant's uh, constru proposed construction of the second floor infill? Um, well, typically, sorry. Uh, um, usually when, when something, <clears throat> if something is enclosed by a gate, um, like a you know a foyer, or, and we will take jurisdiction back to to as an exterior element back to that front, you know the actual front facade where one opens the front door and goes in. Um, so the 18 inches would start in that inter in that you know sort of in that uh, where the front door is, if you will, or the, or the window. So um, which is why if, if anyone if people are proposing to enclose these kinds of open gated areas. You know, the issue comes up is that now going to become interior space or not? Thank you. Is that, yeah. Okay, Commissioner Bland. There. My um, question, it may have been uh, stated and I just didn't hear it. Um, what is the material for the new um, gates? Shay, you're muted. You need to unmute yourself. Um, powder coated steel. Not iron. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Thank yeah. You. Oh, the wind. Yes, it was powder coated steel. And they are square sections, or do they have any shape to them? They were they were square sections or rectangular sections. Okay. Yeah. Commission Okay, Commissioner Jefferson. Um, your stair, uh, the existing are square corners, correct? And your new ones are rounded corners, correct? Is that the difference? Yeah, well, they, we're, we were picking up, that's correct. We, we were rounding the corners in a way similar to, well, not only what was here before, where they extend out past and they are rounded, sans the, the plinth blocks, but also similar to uh, what the client was looking at, which was the Ralph Lauren um, flagship on 79th. Was, uh, but was the, the, existing, the existing ones were square, correct? I mean, the existing ones are square with metal grates. And I, I, we feel like those were, well, they, they're higher than um, anyone would like. They're more than eight inches. Um, and they just at some point someone put a metal metal grate down on top of it. That that we don't even know who did that. That was a maintenance guy, we think. And he keeps painting them every year. Thank you. Hey, any other questions? All right, I'm not seeing any other questions, so I think we will move to our discussion. And for those of you who are not unmuted, I just requested that you unmute so we can um, move to close the hearing. So Commissioner Bland, would you make a motion to close the hearing? So moved. Thank you. And Commissioner Lutfi, would you second that motion? Second. Thank you. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. The hearing is closed and we'll begin our discussion. So we are looking at the change to the steps with the railing the replacement of the gates with the new gates and bringing the mezzanine forward and the new glazing behind it, as well as the change of the material at the bulkhead on the roof. So Commissioner Goldblum, would you like to start this one? Sure. Let's start with the uh, infill on the second floor. I think that without uh, substantiation from historical materials of an infill at the second floor, or let's say above the spring line of the arches, I'd be, I, I have I have difficulties with the uh, proposal that brings the interior envelope within the arches of the facade. <laughs> I would say that if such um, support cannot be found, <laughs> that the um, uh, assumption should be 
that these arch, you know, this vestibule was a full height vestibule and that the um, infill should stay back, I would say at least 18 inches from the inside pier of the facade, the inside facade, inside wall of the facade. <laughs> so that there's really a reading from outside of a double height space. Uh, second, I think that the applicant's own analysis of the existing facade that, was, that they did as an overlay to the tax photo was a much better starting point than where they are. And that was touched on by the Victorian Society. The spring, in their design, the uh, spring line of their uh, lunette or their transom <laughs> really starts one grid bay below the spring line of the arch. <clears throat> and it's accentuated by the, you know, the, the grid really starts one bay down and goes all the way up. There's no um, vertical separations or hierarchy <laughs> and the horizontal hierarchy is fairly muted. If you look at the section, the gates step in <laughs> again at that same uh, point, uh, you know, uh, uh, below the um, the spring line of the arch. So I, I think that um, I mean, let me say this: I have no problem at all with an interpretive design. It need not be the gates to uh, College Walk at Columbia University replicated, but I think that it needs to follow the inspiration of the existing, which is amply shown on the tax photo. And if you go back to the tax photo, some of the principles that I think they should be following are clearly identified in their own uh, red line sketch. Number one, that the uh, spandrel is aligning with the spring line of the arch and goes down from there. Second, that the uh, grid which can, which need not, in my opinion, be a full, you know, Roman grill with the X's, but it would be nice if they could, um, but it need not be, I don't think, um, should have a tripartite division vertically. It should have a quote unquote thermal window. <laughs> thermal windows were located in baths. That's why they drew it. That's why it was here. <laughs> so I think the the tripartite division of the arches is very important. I would also suggest that that tripartite division might in the center bay where you have a single door <coughs> carry down and instead of having a double door be a single door um, or a single gate. Uh, lastly, I think that, well not lastly, the, the, the gates themselves, the areas below the um, freeze, I guess, um, are very dense. They're proposed to be very dense, much denser than was evident in the, in the tax photo. Now, I guess that's okay, but it does make me think that if, if the applicant is desperate, desperate for sunlight and is therefore losing the, the Roman grills on the upper level, they might explore uh, lightening it up on the lower level to more accurately uh, uh, replicate the rhythm that is shown in the tax photo. Um, another thing that's shown in the tax photo very clearly is that all the elements have a very significant profile. Again, it need not be, in my opinion, a historic replication, but even as a modern interpretation, it's quite feasible to create shadow and depth and detail that would uh, suggest the kind of articulation that's shown in the tax photo in a more modern uh, vocabulary. And lastly, I think that the comments about the, the plinth stairs are, uh, were, uh, from the Victorian Society were appropriate. They should really be solid blocks from a maintenance point of view, and they should be granite. Limestone stairs are not, you know, they're great if you have Ralph Lauren's budget on the Upper East Side with some lackey Clean, steam cleaning them once a day, <clears throat> but for normal real life, uh, granite, granite is what they were, and granite is what they should be. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Devonshire. 
I would repeat everything that Commissioner Goldblum said. I, I agree with him completely. The, the one other thing that I sort of picked up on, I put a magnifier on the tax photo and those, um, those steps are actually curved, but with a much tighter um, arc than the ones that are being proposed. And I would, I would suggest the applicant work with the staff to, to make it less Ralph Lauren and a little bit more New York City Bass. <laughs> Commissioner Chen. Yeah, I, I, uh, I agree with uh, <clears throat> quite a few of the comments. Uh, and uh, so, um, but overall, um, it seems fine. Okay, Commissioner <clears throat> Bland. Um, nobody's talked about the bulkhead. The bulkhead's great. Um, <laughs> now, um, we've heard, I, I think the, the gist here is about the, the, the gates and the infill of the arch and so forth. I think I don't have the same view that I've heard expressed so far. <clears throat> I think um, uh, it's all gone. It's been replaced once in a very sort of 70s-ish style. That seems to be wanting to go away now. Um, so I think you have a free, a pretty free reign. Uh, it was certainly freer uh, in, in the last iteration, the iteration that is currently existing. So some previous uh, group of us certainly approved a, a, a wild and crazier way of designing those gates. So I don't, I don't ascribe to the idea that it has to go back to the tax photo very much at all. I think, frankly, they're very elegant done this way. I have no problem with bringing out the windows to the, to the front, as long as that grid is expressed very strongly, which, which was the grid earlier. Um, again, not as the window, I understand, but as a grid. Uh, I think the uh, placement of the bars very tight to one another below is, is elegant, but I do think it goes against the idea of getting a little more light in there, but that's maybe neither here nor there. I think the whole thing is, is actually quite elegant. I asked the question about iron versus steel. I guess it's steel bar stock, uh, I guess. Uh, I'm not gonna ask that the, uh, that the applicant tell us that. Um, I still think iron would be better, but I think steel bar stock can be made to be solid and feel solid and, and therefore would achieve the result. Um, I think the steps are, are fine. The lanterns are already there, whether they're gas or electric, I leave to others. Uh, I just, the idea of gas, um, um, constantly on, wasting all that gas, I, I wonder about, but I really don't know the answer. And I'm getting a call and I'm gonna mute myself, thank you. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Lutfi. Um, you know, this is a little challenging because uh, there's been a change of use here and it happened quite a while ago. And so I think the challenge is how do you respect the um, integrity of the original architecture or pay homage to it and also um, enable the applicant to uh, make some changes so that this building, which was never designed to be a residential building but has been since the 90s, can continue to serve the, the occupants in a way that makes their life livable. <laughs> and, and for me, light is, and I've said it at many you know, meetings, light is very important when you live somewhere. And I feel like the, the applicant um, has been, in the design, is trying to meet this challenge in a way that, um, you know, that, that, that does, that does uh, complement and that does try to work with the, um, with, with what was there and what, and what, what was there. So, um, and what no longer exists. So 
I, I also am not having a problem with this overall. I think it's, um, I think it's quite, um, I'm just going to use the word elegant. And it, um, it fits nicely with, with what's there. I do agree that the, um, the metal work at the bottom of the doors is, is a little tight and I'm not sure why that is. Maybe it's for privacy because um, we don't really know exactly what's on the other side of these doors, um, but I'm okay with it. I'm, I'm okay with the, um, I'm okay with the lanterns. I don't think they should be gas. And, um, you know, the steps should be solid. Uh, I'm not concerned whether or not they're full nose or straight. Um, I really have to say, I think overall, this is a good project. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Jefferson. Um, um, this, this is an interesting issue for me. I think the design is extremely elegant. It's, it's, it's very elegant and tasteful, but I'm in agreement with Commissioner Goldblum. I think it, for that context, for that building, it needs a little bit more toughness to it. I think the elegance is, you know, I mean, it's just a matter of, it's a sense of taste and technique, but the existing had this heaviness, this, this, this aesthetic to it, which I would like to see. Uh, therefore, I agree with Commissioner mm. Go. Okay. And Commissioner Gustafson? Yeah, I, I, I agree almost wholeheartedly with, uh, almost completely with uh, Commissioner Goldblum's comments. Um, you know, we, we should remind ourselves here that um, uh, this is not making adjustments to a building in an historic district. This is an individual landmark. Um, so um, our standard is um, quite a bit um, higher um, and less flexible when we talk about, you know, considerations of, you know, that admit perhaps are not before us, like, you know, light and lifestyle. Um, the individual landmark is far more important. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Shamir Barron. Uh, uh, I, you know, the, the more I look at the tax photo, the historic photo, it's interesting, despite the fact that there were doors and um, sort of portico doors inside of the archways, they, because of what uh, Commissioner Goldblum described as profile, they, um, the, they had a kind of a filigree or almost a, like a foil-like quality about them. Whereas I think that these, this gate is unambiguous. These gates have a certain, and especially in reference to your question, um, Commissioner Carroll, about the, uh, about the section, square, rectangular, whatever it was, Chair Carroll, um, the, I, I just feel like there's a certain kind of like heavy, actually. It's more, what they're proposing is more opaque, more heavy, more sort of brutal than the, um, than the better detailed example of the historic example, even though there was more material in a sense in the historic example. So I guess what I'm, I would want to see here is a um, more of a filigreed or more um, expression or a lighter um, um, it, it sort of different kinds of scale within the articulation of these gates. Right now they just read as brutal and sort of jail-like and you can feel, you can imagine what touching them will be like hard and sort of um, course, you know, and I think that it should be the opposite. So I, I you know, while I would, I'm, I'm open to a, a variety of different interpretations here, as the others have said, I think that this one is just not quite there yet. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Halford Smith. Sorry. Uh, I agree with uh, most of the comments of uh, Commissioner Goldblum um, and also just what um, Commissioner Shamir Barron was saying about the, the heaviness of these, the gates as they're proposed now. Um, I think, I mean, looking at the drawings, it looks to me like they're, they're flat bars, which are quite wide and the, and the gap is quite narrow. And I think that reading that very flat reading is what we're all sort of reacting to. And I think 
if they could work with their proportions of that. And, and as Michael was saying, um, there, are, there are lots of things you can do with modern detailing that just would evoke some feeling of, of it would give some depth and evoke some, you know, more of the original reading of these, of these doors as, you know, as modern gates. Okay, great. All right, thank you all for your comments. So I think what we'll do is today we won't take an action. Um, I think while there's been some support for it as is, most commissioners um, feel that the, the proposed gates do not provide the sort of quality level of articulation, um, depth profile, and sort of uh, a sort of solid to void proportion that is uh, that would be consistent with the style of this building. And I think everybody's open to something interpretive, but that it sort of take its cues from the quality of the original infill. So we won't take an action today and we'll ask you to work with the staff and we'll have you back when you're ready. Okay, thank you. Okay, we'll move to the next hearing item. It's number eight. This is LPC 21-02023, an application for a certificate of appropriateness in the borough of Manhattan, block 461, lot 7502, 217 East 5th Street uh, and 217 Rear East 5th Street. This is in the East Village, Lower East Side Historic District, an Italianate style apartment building and back building uh, built circa 1862 to 63. The application is to construct an elevator tower, replace a deck, modify a masonry opening and install a balcony at the back building. Thank you, commissioners. The applicant has joined the hearing. Um, you now have control of the screen. Uh, you must state your name for the record and you may begin. And do remember to unmute yourself when you speak. Thank you. And Mr. Ranelli, if you could just unmute yourself and just click on the screen to um, gain control of the slides. Okay. Um, Hi, good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, I'm George Ranelli, architect for the project at 217 Rear East 5th Street. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, great. Um, so uh, we'd like to begin the presentation for our proposal for 217 Rear East 5th Street. Um, so you just need to click on the screen. Okay. And then you can advance the slides with the Great. mouse or the arrow keys. Great. Thank you. Um, our proposal for 217 Rear East 5th Street, located between 2nd and 3rd Avenues, is an aging in place project. It's to accommodate two elderly, fragile uh, parents for the current owners uh, to accommodate an ADA lift addition. Uh, and it's located in the East Village Historic District in Manhattan. The house is situated behind 217 East 5th Street, which you can see in photo A with the uh, red arrow. Um, the access uh, from 5th Street is through a public hall to a door to the rear yard to 217 Rear East 5th Street, which you can see in the series of photographs C, D, and F uh, in the lower part of the slide. The house was built in 1863 and was uh, built sometime before 1987. And sometime before 1987, the uh, house was altered to its current non-historic exterior condition. Um, this slide uh, shows you the historic district map and the little single family house, 217 Rear, behind 217 East 5th Street, uh, located between 2nd and 3rd Avenues. Various views of 217 Rear East 5th Street shows the house hemmed in by large buildings and walls of the uh, other buildings and the garden wall. The lower row of photos shows the heavy metal staircase 
from uh, the ground floor level to the third floor, projecting off the facade of the house. This upper row of photos shows the interior of the tiny house. Each floor plate measures 22 and a half feet by 25 feet. The required space for an, an ADA lift inside the house just wasn't there. The lower row of photos shows the roof deck covering most of the roof area and an existing heavy metal gazebo and roof bulkhead, which is connected to a spiral staircase that connects all three floors of the house and the cellar. This is a rendering uh, showing, sorry. This is a rendering showing the existing conditions of the little three-story house, uh, 217 Rear East 5th Street. The entrance uh, of this little house is through a bump out off the primary facade that measures five feet by 13.5 feet. The upper level doors and windows of the exterior stair and roof deck and bulkhead and metal gazebo can be seen in this photo, a rendering. This rendering shows our proposal for 217 rear for an ADA access lift addition. Because there is no room inside the house for a lift and no room at the back of the building since it sits at the lot line um, and no room at the west end of the facade made this the logical uh, position for it. The addition sits inside the existing entrance to the house and travels up to the second and third floors to the roof deck as shown on the right side of the, of the rendering. This rendering shows the proposal for the ADA lift addition in the context of the existing adjacent building and rear yard lot line depicted by the white vertical and horizontal lines in the image. I might also add that these are uh, GFRC uh, uh, cast panels and uh, would like to keep in mind that all of the construction for this project needs to be fabricated uh, offsite and the only access way into the project is through that very small uh, uh, public hallway that connects from Fifth Street into the courtyard. On this slide, you can see the upper image uh, is of the existing exterior metal staircase, which darkens the exterior and interior of the little house. The lower image is of our proposal to dematerialize the staircase by lightening up the materials and adding transparency. The reduced size of the second floor platform and removal of the stair to the third floor. This accommodates the proposed ADA lift addition depicted on the lower right hand slide side of the slide. This visual study shows the existing street views uh, from 5th Street and 6th Street, which do not reveal the little house with 217, the little house, 217 rear, which sits at the lot line at the back. The lower image is of, a, of our proposed addition which is of the same height as the existing roof bulkhead, leaving the little house to remain invisible from the public streets, either on 5th Street or 6th Street. Uh, this is a pair of elevation drawings. On the left, the existing condition shows the exterior staircase and landings on the second and third floors to access doors into the house. On the right, the proposed addition inserted uh, into the existing space inside the house at the ground floor and the ADA lift addition with points of access to the second, third floors and roof through the existing doors and uh, culminates at the uh, roof deck. Uh, these section drawings, uh, uh, at the section drawing at the left uh, sh uh, shows the existing exterior staircase 
second and third floor landings and roof gazebo. On the right hand side, the smaller second floor landing uh, will, is, is the replacement and removed gazebo to make space for the ADA lift at the roof. On the left, the existing plan shows the rear yard and interior of the ground floor of the tiny house. On the right, the proposed revision inserts the ADA lift into the existing entryway. On the left, the existing second floor plan with the uh, much larger uh, iron terrace. On the right, the proposed changes to the second floor landing and the ADA lift point of access. On the left, the existing third floor plan. On the right, the proposed changes to add a point of access from the ADA lift and a small balcony at the bedroom window. On the left on this slide is the existing roof plan. Uh, on the right, the proposed ADA lift addition and new roof bulkhead for a point of access to the roof deck. This is a, a specification for uh, the material to revise the exterior staircase and deck using metal with glass uh, lenses to lighten up the stair and terrace from the ground floor to the second floor and the uh, smaller second floor landing. Um, we also thought to include uh, a few precedent work of historic carriage house uh, uh, renovations, uh, examples of sensitive design for a modern addition to a carriage house building in historic districts that blend comfortably into their context. Of course, none of these are ADA lifts, uh, which is really an unprecedented uh, uh, condition. So here you see uh, this one in the Gramercy Park Historic District uh, with a historic facade and a modern link. Uh, this in the Greenwich Village Historic District on Cornelia Street with a, uh, uh, with a renovated historic facade and a very large expanse of glass at the rear of the building. Uh, same in Greenwich Village Historic District, number 29 Downing Street, uh, with a restored historic facade and very elaborate uh, transformations of the rear facade. Thank you. I'd be happy to answer questions at this point. Thank you very much. Commissioners, do we have any questions at this point? Not seeing any questions, we'll see if we have public testimony and we may have questions after that. If you're in the meeting and you'd like to testify on this item, please raise your hand so we can identify you. And I'll ask Lisa Kersavage to walk us through any testimony. Okay, hey, thank you. Um, nobody signed up for this item and I do not see any hands raised. Okay, all right. Rich, do we have any written testimony? Yes, we have a resolution from Manhattan Community Board 3 recommending approval. Okay, great. All right. Um, commissioners, any final questions before we move to close the hearing? All right. All right. Thank you, Mr. Rinaldi. I think your presentation was so clear. We don't have any questions. So we will go ahead and make a motion to close the hearing. Um, Commissioner Bland, would you make that motion? Uh, yes, a motion to close the hearing. Thank you. Thank and you. Commissioner, Commissioner Jefferson, would you second that motion? I second that motion. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, so hearing is closed and we'll begin our discussion. Um, and this is, while it's the front facade of a back house, it's a back house that is hemmed in has, as has been shown by the applicant, um, even within the rear yards. Um, and it is um, a, a lift, an extension to accommodate a lift in um, contemporary materials. Commissioner Shamir Barron, would you like to start this one? Sure. Uh, I actually think that this is, uh, it, it seems that there are really not very mother, many other choices. I mean, other than replacing the circular stair itself, which would mean that there wouldn't be an interior stair. 
Um, and so I think otherwise this is done in, in a reasonable way and I think I could approve it as presented. Okay, Commissioner Holford-Smith. I agree, I think it's a very uh, good solution to this problem and so interesting to see these little back houses in, in the city and how people live um, mm -hmm. walking through one building to get to the other. Um, so I think this is very appropriate and uh, I could approve it. Okay, great. Commissioner Goldblum. Agreed. Okay, Commissioner Devonshire. Approvable. Commissioner Chen. Same here. Okay, Commissioner Bland. I think everything about this project is really quite wonderful uh, from just seeing it, first of all, um, as Ann said, but also I wanna comment particularly on the use of the material I know George said uh, that it had to be of a size and so forth that it would fit in this <laughs> ordinary small um, corridor to get back to it. But also the material itself seems to me to be kind of tough, a little bit like, you know, the Lower East Side is a little bit tough. And the material I think blends very well with the, uh, I guess it's stucco. Um, so the whole thing is very inventive and a great solution. Great. Commissioner Lutfi. Um, I agree with my fellow commissioners. I think this is very thoughtfully done and well done. And Commissioner Jefferson. Uh, very well done. I think the staircase, the um, the class in the in the stairs, it, it's wonderful. I can imagine just light shining through that. Very well done. Great. And Commissioner Gustafson. Appropriate. Okay, great. So I think we're all in agreement on this one. And um, Commissioner Shamir Barron, would you make the motion? Yes, sure. In the matter of LPC 2102023, it's uh, 217 East 5th Street and 217 Rear East 5th Street, East Village, Lower East Side Historic District. An Italianate style apartment building mm -hmm. and back building built in circa 1862 to 63. The application is to construct an elevator tower replace a deck, modify a masonry opening, and install a balcony at the back of the building. I note that the building style, scale, materials, and details are among the features that contribute to the special architectural and historic character of the East Village Lower East Side Historic District. And I also note that the proposed work is limited to the back building on this site. I recommend approval, finding that the proposed, the proposed work will not damage or destroy any significant architectural features of the building, that none of the proposed work will be visible from a public thoroughfare that the presence of existing cellar access and ventilation ducts preclude construction of the elevator tower adjacent to the deeper neighboring building, that the design and details of the proposed GFRC paneled elevator tower will not detract from the simple altered facade of the back house, that the finish of the proposed elevator tower will blend with the existing stucco finish of the building's facade, that the footprint of the proposed elevator tower will be the minimal feasible to provide barrier-free access throughout the building that the proposed deck will project no more than eight feet from the facade into the required rear yard and will feature a smaller footprint than the existing deck. That the design and materiality of the proposed deck featuring metal and glass decking and railings will be in keeping with materials of contemporary decks typically found at rear yards of buildings or st of, st of the style and age. That the proposed metal Juliet balcony will be typical of similar installations typically found at rear facades of buildings of this age in terms of details and materials. That the proposed modification to the masonry opening on the top floor will only remove a limited amount of plain stucco clad brickwork and will maintain the rhythm of the masonry openings at the top floor. And that the work will not detract from the special oh. historic character of the back or street facing building or the East Village uh, East Village Lower East Side Historic District. Sorry, you're muted. Commissioner Bland, would you second that motion? Second. All right, Rich, will you call the vote? Chair Carroll. Aye. Commissioner Bland? Aye. Commissioner Shamir Barron? Aye. Commissioner Chapin? She's gone. Chapin. Oh, okay, just wanted to double check. Commissioner Chen? Aye. Commissioner Devonshire? Aye. Commissioner Goldblum? Aye. Commissioner Gustafson? Aye. Commissioner Jefferson? Aye. Commissioner Lutfi? Aye. Commissioner Holford Smith? Aye. Okay, with 10 in favor and one not present, the motion carries. So that's approved. Thank you. And we'll move to the next item.
Next item is number nine, LPC 21-01296, an application for a certificate of appropriateness in the borough of Manhattan, block 720, lot 75, 456 West 23rd Street in the Chelsea Historic District Extension. Uh, this is an Italianate style row house built in 1857 and the application is to replace windows. Thank you, commissioners. Um, staff will be presenting and walking through the details of this proposal and the applicants are available to comment at the end and answer any questions. Um, so staff, you may begin. Good afternoon, commissioners. Marcello Pacheco, preservation staff. Um, this item is 456 West 23rd Street, which is located between 9th and 10th Avenues in the Chelsea Historic District Extension. Um, last year in 2019, the commissioners reviewed a proposal for full window replacement. The proposal as presented was to remove all existing windows and install two over two straight headed fiberglass windows within the original segmental arch headed openings. The commission approved the proposal with the stipulation that the new windows effectively remove uh, the blocking at the top of the openings and incorporate segmental arch headed windows and that the material have a solid substrate behind the cladding and the profiles and details of the muntins and brick molds be refined. The commissioners will note that the building did not proceed with this approved scope and a certificate of appropriateness was not issued. The new proposal before you today is for sash replacement only at the parlor through fourth floors. The existing multi-light window sashes will be removed and new two over two solid wood sash kits with tracks will be installed within the existing frames and existing exterior trim and brick molds will be retained. Staff notes that the original windows were replaced and the original frames were altered at the head condition by filling in the segmental arch with blocking prior to designation of the historic district decades ago. Um, to the left is the 1940s photo of the building, which shows the historic window configurations. And here is some recent context uh, of the row showing the existing windows as well as some of the context further down the block of the row. Staff notes that there are a number, of altered, uh, a number of altered facades and windows with similar window head conditions in buildings within the row. Here's a photo of the condition at the time of designation, circa 1980, where the existing multi-light windows were present, and the 1940s tax photo again on the following page again for a comparison. Um, just to finish up the photos. Uh, on a, you can see some of the typical photos of the windows, uh, as well as a more recent photo of the parlor floor windows. Um, and here are some of the photos of these existing conditions at the interior and a few close-ups of the windows themselves, which the applicant has documented as having a number of thermal issues uh, and lack of oper operability at a number of the upper sashes. Finally, uh, on this sheet, um, you can see the elevation is existing uh, and the proposed elevation after the sash kits are installed. Um, and on this, to close things out, the, uh, on the left, you can see the section detail and the jam detail on the right of this uh, proposed sash kit. Um, the applicant will now give a brief statement and is able to answer, answer any questions. Just a reminder to please unmute yourself and state your name for the record. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, my name is Tobias Florin, representing Christie House at 456 West 21st Street, making sure everyone can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. First of all, uh, I wanna thanks for the time uh, for this group of people, commissioners, to uh, consider our request. Um, as you saw in some of the pictures, our house wasn't in the best condition um, so over the last 18 months, we have tried to uh, make it more beautiful um, on, on our block. Um, we are currently restoring our wood door that is original uh, with the approval from this group and landmark. We also, as you saw in some picture during the last six months, has restored both the back and front facade, um, restoring it and painting it again with, with this group and landmarks uh, approval. Um, the window has been a concern of the co-op. Um, it was changed and as was mentioned, we send in an application to replace 
the back and front. The back windows was replaced uh, with great success. The front, unfortunately, when we got a contractor to look at the outside um, to uh, approach the arches, but also the internal, uh, there was a concern with the um, integrity of the facade. Um, <clears throat> so it wasn't recommended. Uh, in addition to that, there was um, cost associated with this. Um, so with the new custom-made windows, um, with the exterior um, arch that they need to do and internal, uh, the price tag would be around $265,000, which was fairly heavy for our co-op. Uh, we start looking into the sash. It's around 40,000. Uh, we managed to create the sash as the tax photo. We also be able to uh, pay a premium to have the same material um, as the original, which has been shared uh, with Landmark uh, previously. Uh, we also looked into if there was possibility of restoring the sashes. Um, so several of our window sashes are unfortunately rotten. Um, some of them can't be closed. Um, so there's a lot of draft. And as you can see on one of the pictures, on winter, it's actually getting so cold on the inside of the window. So there is actually frost on the inside of the window. So um, I know that's more subjective perspective, um, but it's not uh, optimal living uh, conditions. So when we found this option, uh, we want to present that and we want to proceed with it. And um, that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, so any questions, commissioners? So the first time we saw this, we, we uh, approved the two over two configuration, but asked them to recreate the arched head. And after doing research um, and looking at the interior conditions, which have been modified and are now square headed um, and looking at what the co-op was able to do, they're now proposing a sash replacement only so that they won't have to do, I think that interior demolition. Um, and that's why they're back before us today with this new information and a revised or different proposal. Okay, so I don't see any questions. So why don't we see if there's anyone who'd like to speak on this application. If you're here, please raise your hand and we'll um, take, uh, uh, we will uh, call on you. So Lisa, will you walk us through the testimony? Sure, uh, we had one person sign up, that's Kelly Carroll. And I've already brought you in, Kelly. Kelly Carroll, Historic Districts Council. The careful Italianate proportions of this facade became compromised when the sills of the parlor floor were raised. The fenestration was designed to attenuate as it moves upward on the facade. Thus, the longest windows belong at the bottom. HDC asks that the parlor floor sills be dropped back down to their original locations and divide these windows into thirds as they were originally. Close examination of the tax photo revealed that the historic windows had segmentally cut glazing set within a square sash, and we asked that this condition be restored. This building is a part of a row of nine other buildings built identically in 1857. Each building varies in its architectural integrity, which is why it's important to move this house toward its original splendor, which in turn will move the row in the correct direction as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And I don't see anybody else with their hand raised for this item. Okay, Rich, do we have any written testimony? Yes, we do have a letter from Manhattan Community Board 4 recommending denial of the application and urges LPC to work with the applicant to arrive at a new configuration for the windows. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, uh, Mr. Florin, would you like to respond to the testimony? No, we, we appreciate it. Uh, and I believe several of the co-op houses in the area, as we heard Marcelo said, uh, has tried to find solution that, that works. Um, I believe that the community on our block works really hard to make our uh, block look better. Um, I also want to say in, in regards to um, the windows that we examined the frames of the windows as well. So that was restored um, during the summer when we had scaffolding up. Um, so we believe we have done as much as possible to to make okay. this as good as possible. 
All right, thank you. I just had one question. I know that Marcello noted that the uh, uh, on this street, there's a variety of window configurations and right. many alterations. And do you know, was that the case even at the time of the tax photo when many of these buildings were converted to multiple dwellings? Um, so so I'm aware that, that two building uh, closer to 10th Avenue has the same square windows as we do. Um, the, the build, so we have three houses with the square windows. The building left to us has actually the arch and then the building next to that has the square. So I believe the majority of the houses has square uh, of the houses that was referred to in one of the written statements. Thank you. Marcello, can you just go back to the tax photos? Or that's the designation photo, I guess. Okay, one of the- and There we okay. go. Okay, so even at the time of the tax, <coughs> we start to see some of the alterations that Correct. Um, went along with the conversion of these buildings. Okay. Can I speak? This is Rosella Giordano from apartment 3F. Yes, please go ahead. Hi. Um, so I just heard the testimony and I just like to add that right now we're in dire strains <laughs> budget wise um, and we are working so hard to keep the integrity of the building intact um, with very limited funds. Uh, as much as we would love to, you know, install the new, you know, the original windows. Unfortunately, that's not an option for us. And replacing the sash kits is the only thing that we could do. Um, repairing the windows, I purchased my apartment six years ago. I can't open all three windows from the top. Um, the left window doesn't stay open. I hear all the noise and traffic on, on the street. And I'm not the only one that's experiencing these issues. And I, I'm new to this conversation. That's the reason why I had asked Tobias to start um, the, uh, the conversation. I understand Landmark's you know, role in preserving the integrity of these buildings, but what, I mean, I, I, I asked for some consideration because if we just were to re, re, well, fix, let's just say fix our sashes as is, we're not getting anywhere. And I don't know, and I can't foresee when the building will have the funds to replace these windows, probably another 10 years. Um, it seems that it's, you know, the building has been upgraded in 20 year increments. Uh, I hope that you can see our side and, and our, our, you know, not our argument, our proposal as a um, benefit to the block and that we are keeping everyone's interest at the top of our list. Uh, and we're trying to beautify the building and the block and we hear your concerns. And I thank you for everything else and all the approvals that you've given us in the last year for the upgrades to the building that we've had. Okay. Thank you. All right, commissioners, do we have any final questions? Okay, I'm gonna start unmuting or asking to unmute you so that we can close the hearing and move to our discussion. Okay, and commissioner Shamir Barron, would you make a motion to close the hearing? So moved. Thank you. Commissioner Gustafson, would you second that motion? Second. Thank you. Okay. So, um, you know, this is an application. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Hearing is closed. Um, and we'll begin our discussion. And just to set it up, and I, I sort of already have said this, but we saw this application once for full window replacement and asked them to replicate the historic arches. And they're back today after having studied the inside of their building and the conditions and found that um, doing full window replacement would require ex extensive interior demolition and really sort of changing the openings on the inside of various apartments. And so they've reduced the scope of the application to be just sash replacement. And um, in a two over two configuration, but of course fitting within the existing opening, which doesn't allow the recreation of the arched head. So 
they've shown that the street, even as early as the tax photo that these row houses built in 1851 had, had already seen alterations when they were converted to multiple dwellings, which was very common in the early 20th century um, in, in these buildings in this neighborhood and other similar districts. And um, so to date, the row, and as was mentioned in testimony as well, it has um, a variety of conditions. And the proposal before us, I think, is an incremental um, step toward the historic <coughs> configuration would restore the two over two configuration um, while not capturing the arched head. And, um, and I think given support, but I wanna of course hear from the rest of you. So um, Fred, would you like to go next on this? Oh, window man here. Um, Commissioner Bland. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, in a perfect world, we would go back and fix them and lower the sash on the parlor floor and so forth and so on. We don't always live in such a perfect world. And um, I know we're not supposed to take financial and the economy into play necessarily, but how can you not? Um, I, you know, I think I can go along with it. I'm not sure I'm gonna have many supporters with me, but I, I can. Commissioner Lutfi. Um, <clears throat> yeah, this is kind of challenging in a way uh, because I think uh, it would be wonderful if they could go back. Small co-ops have very small reserve funds. So the truth of the matter is they're limited in terms of what they can do. I mean, if they could um, raise the height of the parlor floor, I think that would be wonderful. Um, if that's not feasible, I think I could approve this as it is um, with the proviso that you know, sometime in the future, if possible, you know, when there's another replacement, we're still looking at the possibility of a, you know, a full brick to brick replacement. Yes, I think so. And I think if it were an application, well, as it was an application for full brick to brick, we would, I think, have that opportunity to modify the opening. But given that it's just sash replacement, I think in that reduced scope, that's what you know, it makes me feel comfortable that it's a, a lesser scope of work, but in that, in what it is, it um, is an incremental improvement. And I think still fits within the variety of windows that have been altered historically, even on these buildings, it sort of rep represent that historic um, conversion to multiple dwelling, which is so typical. Okay, Commissioner Jefferson. As an inter, as an intermediate, well, as an intermediate step, I think it's fine. It's approvable by me. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Gustafson. Yeah, agreed. Okay, Commissioner Shamir Barron. I'm in agreement. Okay, Commissioner Holford Smith. I agree as an incremental um, improvement to the building. Okay, I can approve it. Thank you, Commissioner Goldblum. Me too. Okay, Commissioner Devonshire. Yes, as an incremental improvement, I think this fine. This is fine, and uh, another way I'm able to justify it to myself is that this represents um, the existing windows represent that era in which these buildings were being uh, purchased by slime bag developers who cheaped out and put in square windows, <laughs> and so we've got that moment in history. <laughs> Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Chen. I agree with all the commissioners. Okay, thank you. Um, Commissioner Lutfi, are you comfortable reading that motion? Of course. Okay. Um, in the matter of docket uh, 2101296, 456 West 23rd Street, Chelsea Historic District Extension, an Italianate style row house built in 1857, the application is to replace windows. 
I know that the building style, scale materials, and details are among the features that contribute to the special architectural and <clears throat> character of the Chelsea Historic District extension. I recommend approval finding that the existing windows and sashes are not original to the building and therefore the work will not eliminate significant historic fabric. That interior window surrounds have been boxed out, making it difficult to install segmental arched windows without excessive disruption of finished interior wall surfaces. That the proposed double hung two over two wood sashes painted black will more closely match the historic windows in terms of operation, configuration, material, and finish, and that the work will be limited to sash replacement only with the existing modified window <laughs> rear trim and brick molds to remain and will not preclude future brick to brick window replacement that matches the historic segmental arched head headed configuration. Commissioner Bland, would you second that motion? Second. Okay, Rich, will you call the vote? Chair Carroll? Aye. Commissioner Bland? Aye. Commissioner Shamir Barron? Aye. Commissioner Chapin? Did she leave for the day? She's left for the day. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Chen? Aye. Commissioner Devonshire? Aye. Commissioner Goldblum? Aye. Commissioner Gustafson? Aye. Commissioner Jefferson? Aye. Commissioner Lucky? Aye. And Commissioner Holford Smith? Aye. Okay, with 10 in favor and unopposed, the motion carries. That's approved. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Okay, we're going to move to item number 10. This is LPC 21 02245, application for a certificate of appropriateness in the borough of Manhattan, block 1120, lot 23, 1 West 67th Street. The Hotel des Artistes, Upper West Side, Central Park West Historic District. A neo-Gothic style studio building with Tudor style elements designed by George M. Pollard, built in 1915 to 18. The application is to modify the parapet, replace a skylight, and replace select windows. And commissioners, the applicants have joined the hearing. Uh, you now have control of the presentation. Please state your name for the record, and you may begin. Hello, this is Martin Finney, uh, partner at Gustav Finney Architecture. Did you all hear that? Yes, we can hear you. Please okay. proceed. Thanks. Th thank you, Commissioner. Uh, good afternoon. Um, and the three issues that are uh, being under consideration here for this building are um, a parapet modification to the secondary facade, um, a skylight modification, and window replacement. So the project is 1 West 67th Street, <coughs> Hotel Des Artistes. Um, basic building information, uh, it, is, it was built in 1915 uh, by George Pollard, as you heard, a uh, neo-Gothic building with some Tudor elements. Um, and the windows in question are multi-pane casements uh, with transoms that are uh, of steel and steel multi-pane pivoting windows. Uh, just to give you some context, here is the site right on the corner, well, just off the corner of uh, West 67th Street in Central Park West. Um, here you see it within the Upper West Side Central Park West Historic District that was designated in 1990. And zooming in on that, you see the configuration of the building, uh, more specifically in that district on 67th Street. And then here it is within the context of its own block. And as you can see, the, the work that we're doing is, or the work that's in question is on the secondary facade of the building. So it's the, it's the rear facade, um, which is uh, overlooking actually 68th Street and not 67th Street. Here's an axonometric drawing uh, from that same orientation. So you're looking at the secondary facade here from 68th Street. And as we zoom into that, the, the outlined area of this drawing is the uh, work that's in question, uh, or the, the sort of the apartment that's in question. Um, just to give you a sense of some of the other buildings on the block that why it's constituted in this historic district, um, 27 West 67th Street is a similar type building. Uh, and then 33 West and 15 West were also designed by Pollard. Uh, and you can see on the images below these photographs where they are relative to 
the hotel days are teased. Um, some archival photos, uh, the one on the left, soon after construction was completed, and the one on the right, the 1940 tax map. Um, you can see the, the kind of multi-pane configuration of these windows that I'll talk about more. This is, again, the 67th Street uh, facade from 1989. And here is an interior photograph of um, Paul Goldberger's apartment at one time. It was good to be Paul Goldberger in 1978. Um, here is a plan of the building. And as I said, our, our work, somehow I suddenly lost my cursor. Oh, there it is. Um, well, I'll show you again some of the the kind of visibility of, of what we're talking about. Um, this is from 1929. You can see uh, that from Central Park West, uh, the portion of the building that's visible from that area. Uh, another view from 1929. And then this view of the east side of the building in 1929 is no longer there. There's a, a, a tower uh, has been built since on the corner of West 67th Street. So that obscures this view of the building. Um, some more views. And again, you can begin to see the character of some of these windows in the back, the multi-pane windows. This is the 1940 tax map of 68th Street. So this is just a sort of incidental view of the building. And I'll show you today the kind of incidental views of this facade. Um, this one from Central Park West, a little bit north of the building. I'll just highlight in yellow what you see of the building. Um, those four large windows are the unit in question. Um, and then just a little further north, on, I'm sorry, a little further south on, on Central Park West, uh, you can see that the building quickly kind of disappears behind this tall tower. And then as we move into 68th Street, you can see a little bit more of the building um, as you move into the block, but then as you move for the west, um, that view becomes largely obscure. And so in terms of some drawing documentation, this is the 67th Street facade. It's a, it's a beautifully composed, kind of symmetrical, rigorous, disciplined uh, facade of the building. Um, whereas maybe the um, north facade is, is not quite of the same ilk, um, but has its own character nonetheless. So all, all of the windows that you see highlighted in blue are, are windows that are in question, but I should say that the, the three large special windows are actually being handled at staff level um, because we will be replacing them in their uh, historic character. And so I'll just toggle, I think I can do that. Yes, I'm, I'll toggle between what is the existing condition right now and the proposed elevation change. So you can see it is the um, lowering or the modification of the parapet um, it is the extension of the skylight that you see on the right um, and replacement of some windows. And the east elevation, um, again, I want to point out the dashed line that you see on this drawing is a tower in front of our building. So this view is, is, does not exist anymore, uh, but there is, is moving slightly to the right. You get a glimpse of these windows, the four windows that you see there in question on the east facade. Uh, here is the proposed change that I'll go into in a little more detail. Uh, and here's an axonometric view of the same thing, showing the modification in this slide. And again, I can toggle back and forth between the two. Um, so I'll talk about the parapet first. Uh, and just to note, first of all, the reason that we're proposing this work is that our client is wheelchair bound. Um, and the parapet is, uh, the current parapet configuration is, is eight and a half inches taller than what POB requires by code for a parapet. Um, and so we are hoping to lower that even, or modify it so that uh, the masonry portion of that is much lower and so that there is a view from wheelchair height of Central Park. And a, a very, very similar proposal was made about eight years ago and approved by Landmarks. Um, it just was never, um, it was it never, seen through. This gives you a sense from 68th Street what that parapet is obscuring of the rest of the building, which is, you can see, you see just a bit of the fascia of a solarium that's on the roof there. Um, and this is the modification, and I'll zoom in to show you that it's just a slightly uh, 
slightly more that is visible. So here again is the current configuration. And here is the proposed modification. Um, in plan, you can see the extents identified in the red dashed line. Um, our unit is on the left here, uh, and our client is has agreed to actually, and, and our neighbors have agreed in the unit uh, beside him uh, that our client will pay for the modification of their uh, parapet as well so that we maintain the symmetry of the building. Um, so again, this is the proposed modification in plan. We'll go into more detail. Here are some images that show the current uh, status of the, the parapet. Um, there is a lot of spalling and the flashing is in need of repair. And in fact, it's our understanding that this parapet is in fact taller than the original one was. There's a evidence of the uh, cutoff terracotta coping that um, indicates that the parapet was in fact at a height lower than it is now. We believe that this somewhere in the last 30 years, this parapet was modified. I guess in, to um, try to cure some waterproofing ills and for whatever reason was built taller than the original. Um, so here are again some more photographs of the current situation of that terrace and the solarium. And I'll just show you now in rendered form uh, what our proposal is. So you can see the parapet section is it's at four foot uh, two and a half, which is about eight and a half, which is eight and a half inches taller than need be. Um, our proposal will drop the masonry portion of the parapet down to two feet above the terrace height and then make up the difference of the three foot six total parapet height requirement with a glass rail um, with the shoe of that glass rail set inside the parapet so that that's not visible from the uh, street and, and also kicking the glass back behind the, the parapet cap so that it is as obscure as, as possible. And that's the view from the proposed view from the interior of that terrace. So here you can see on the left is the current condition and on the right um, is the modified condition. It's, it's fairly modest. Um, we can zoom in on that and you can see, again, you'll never have this view, but just to show you a little more clearly what the change is suggesting. Um, so that's the parapet portion. Uh, if we go to the skylight, you can see the skylight is this small, it's about 10 feet wide uh, element here over the top level. And this is what we're proposing is to extend that skylight over the rest of what is in this photograph to the west side of the building. Um, so in this sort of patched together panorama, that's the skylight again. And we would run it all the way along the length of the building at the top here. Uh, so in plan, you can see on the left is current and on the right is the extended skylight. And then in on the west elevation, you see that existing skylights are in the background here with some mechanical equipment and a guardrail at the edge of the building. We are proposing extending that skylight and just and, and, and creating its profile on the edge of the building with a uh, brick to match existing. And so here is really the only moment where you can see that change um, on 68th Street. Uh, if I zoom into that, you Again, can see just a kind of minor aberration there from what's existing. And then in terms of window replacement, uh, we're replacing all the windows, which is some, I think like 40 some windows in this whole unit. Um, the vast majority of them can be done at staff level because they're not visible. Um, but of the ones that remain that are visible, uh, four of them are in this um, light court. I think light court is a, is a glorified term for this area of the building because I don't think it ever sees the light of day, but uh, there are four small windows that are not original in their current configuration. We are proposing to basically replace them in kind with just a, a higher performing version of the triple glazed version of the window. So here they are uh, indicated in red in that light court. Um, this is a view that you can't get from the street. This, this is a, a, a kind of terrace at the rear of the building that you can only get to from the building. It's just to give you a sense of what it looks like back there. Uh, getting pretty. Um, and so here's the proposed changes. Again, more or less in kind, just going from double glazed to triple glazed. And then there are four windows on the east elevation, which are visible from a very narrow swath of sidewalk. 
Um, three of them are on the ninth floor and one of them are on, is on the mezzanine level. Um, here you can see them outlined in red on the east facade. Um, and here is just indicating, looking from those windows, what part of the sidewalk they are visible from when uh, when you're on Central Park West. So it's it's a pretty it's a pretty narrow window from where these are ever seen. I, I defy any of you walking down 68th if you've ever laid eyes on these windows. Um, but anyway, we are uh, our best guess at what the original conditions of these windows were are from some of these archival photos uh, and. Some of and some other windows that are on that elevation um, that, that aren't ours, but we can make a pretty safe guess that the window shown on the left here is our estimated original window. The window in the middle of this drawing is what's there now, and the window on the right is our proposed replacement. So it's hopefully a, a reasonable compromise between the two. Um, and then the taller, the two taller windows. Uh, similarly, the window on the left is the estimated original. Existing in the middle, and our proposed replacement is on the right. Um, here are some of those details. Uh, these will also be triple glazed. They are by Optimum uh, Steel Windows. Um, Optimum has been an approved window replacement in this building, um, I think, in several other instances uh, with my marks. Um, it's a very, very good product, and obviously, we'll paint these frames to match the uh, existing, well, the original. Uh, frame color in the building. Um, so here is on the left is current configuration and the right is proposed. And I believe, yes, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, commissioners, do we have any questions? Okay. Not seeing any questions, we'll move to testimony and we may have questions after that. So if you'd like to speak on the item, please raise your hand so we can identify you and I'll turn it over to Lisa to walk us through the testimony. Lisa? Okay, um, we'll start with Kelly Carroll, who signed up. And Kelly, I've brought you in. Thank you, Lisa. Just give me one second because I, my screen uh, messed up and I lost my testimony right in front of me. So just one moment as I bring that okay, up. Okay, I can also bring in the next yeah, person if you do better. that. Okay. That would be helpful, thanks. Okay, sure. I'm just gonna leave you where you are though. Um, so I brought in Landmark West. Great, and if you could just, uh, Unmute yourself and turn on your, there you go, and state your name for the record. Good afternoon, commissioners. This is Sean Corsandi for Landmark West. The Landmark West Certificate of Appropriateness Committee was surprised at the volume of changes proposed, but found the detailed presentation very helpful. Our committee found the replacement conservatory to be an improvement over the existing condition, and also believes that although the westward expansion and extension of skylights yields more change, it also provides increased continuity. Given the intent and history of the Des Artistes, these north facing skylights are appropriate. When one thinks of this building, the double height nine square windows immediately come to mind. And having three of these returned gives us hope for the additional return of other altered sets, even on the secondary facades. The main concern of our committee lies with the parapet alterations. This issue is not with the reduced height, but with the additional glazing. Given all the additional glass already proposed in other parts of this application, our committee is concerned with the cumulative effect. When viewed, uh, when reviewed for the prior expired permit, the other skylight wall, window, and conservatory work was not in scope. Given that it now is, our committee must review the entire assembly and thus requests that the applicant instead consider a metal railing already native to the building and within the DNA of the famous monumental windows. With such a modification, the Landmark West Certificate of Appropriateness Committee would fully suggest approval of this application. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, Kelly, we're gonna bring you in again. And just before Kelly starts, if anybody else wishes to speak on the site, please raise your hand. Thank you, and sorry about that. Kelly Carroll, Historic Districts Council, HDC found the glass railings proposed atop the parapets to be inappropriate. 
Rarely invisible, these railings will catch light and be reflective and therefore call attention to the changes being made in this location. Perhaps a more traditional pipe rail would better serve a building of this vintage. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And I don't see any other hands raised. So I think we're good on testimony. Okay, thanks. And Rich, do we have any written testimony? Yes, we do have a resolution from Manhattan Community Board 7 recommending approval. Okay, thank you. All right, Mr. Finio, would you like to respond to any of the comments, particularly the railing? Um, I, I appreciate the comments and, and understand some of the concerns, but I do believe that uh, the, the way that the glass is placed um, has to be inside of the thickness of that masonry wall, I think will will more or less obviate any of the, the experience of that uh, material. And I, I don't believe that it will be anywhere highly reflective at all. Um, thank you. Okay, thank you. Commissioners, any final questions? Okay. Can, Anna. can I add something? I'm the project manager for sure, uh, just on the project state, as well. State your Nate, name for the record, yeah. yeah. Nate Rubin uh, with JS Consulting. Um, and I, I, Martin, I'm not sure if you touched on it, but I just wanted to reiterate that the main reason that we're proposing the glass railing is because our client is a wheelchair bound uh, individual. And part of uh, this improvement was to allow more visibility of the park, which is for his enjoyment um, and, and really was the main purpose of this and was uh, offering to pay for uh, the neighboring units, uh, lowering of the parapet as well. Um, as a means to sort of appease uh, the landmarks and, and keep that continuity within the building. Um, so that, that's my two cents and we hope you'll take that into consideration. Okay, thank you. We do have one more question, Commissioner Jefferson. If, if, if you had a bar railing running across, how many do you need? How many verticals would you need? How much less, how much less would you see if you had a bar railing is a question. Well, my understanding is that we need a uh, uh, maximum of four inch spacing between each, right? That's the, the rule with uh, railing so that it would actually be a fairly uh, dense configuration uh, that we take away from the ability to actually see. Uh, again, your, your view would be obscured by uh, verticals at four inches on center. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions, commissioners? Okay, if not, then I think we'll close the hearing and begin our discussion. So Commissioner Lutfi, would you make a motion to close the hearing? So moved. Thank you. And Commissioner Jefferson, would you second that motion? I second the motion. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so the hearing is closed and we'll begin our discussion. And so there are, you know, three, three components. There is the lowering of the parapet wall and installing the glass railing, the extension of the skylight, and the replacement of windows on the secondary facades. And um, three are in a recessed notch at the back of the building, and the others are on the side elevation, obliquely visible when they're returning the sort of primary uh, configuration to those openings but not the multi-lights. So um, with that, Commissioner Holford-Smith, would you like to start this one? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think the changes to the windows are an improvement actually over what's there now, this on those secondary facades for most of the configurations of this. So I think those are appropriate. Um, I think given the, the com sort of complexity of the roofscape um, and the, the distance from which you see the the roof that lowering the parapet would be acceptable. Um, and I I think I would be in favor of the glass because I think um, having a metal railing will be um, much more obtrusive. And I think especially if the glass is a non-reflective glass, um, the low iron non-reflective that'll go a long way in making it disappear. Uh, my only concern, which is probably not felt by anyone else and really not very visible, is I don't think that, this, that the sidewall of the skylight that's being added should be brick. 
I think that the, sky, the parapet should read as a parapet and the skylight should be clad in metal at the end. Very minor detail that probably no one else will care about but me, but otherwise I think everything else is fine. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Commissioner Goldblum. Oh, you're so wrong, Anne. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. I thought exactly that, and I thought exactly like, oh, I shouldn't say anything about it because no one else to say anything like that. <laughs> so now I can, now I don't have to be a radical and I can just say, I like what Anne said about the <laughs> on the side. But apart from that, uh, apart from that, I agree with everything else Anne said too. And I would also just suggest to staff that I think that the analysis of the casements on the on the party on the sidewall is was appropriate and, and, and wise, and that we should keep this in mind when other windows come up for a placement on this building. I think it's a good standard. Yeah, agreed. Thank you. Commissioner Devonshire. I agree with what Ann said. I agree with what Michael said. And the, the glass is going to be on the north side of the building and I, I don't think reflectance is gonna be an issue at all. Um, so, so there. <laughs> okay. All right, Commissioner Chen. Yeah, let me join the radical movement of the LPC. <laughs> uh, and agreeing with Landmark West as well. Thank you. All right, Com Commissioner Bland. I agree with it all too. Often I have made the point that glass railings are more visible than a, than a plain uh, pipe railing. But I think in this case, there's something very glassy about this building and very famously glassy about the building anyway. Uh, but also uh, the point was just made about being on the north side and I think that makes it much less um, uh, uh, subject to the glare that makes it therefore more visible. So um, I think it's uh, appropriate. The whole thing is appropriate. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Lutfi. Um, I agree with my fellow commissioners. I. I think everything's appropriate. I like the glass railing. I, I really like the extension of the skylight um, very much. And I, I am just kind of shocked that there is no master plan for window replacement on this building. It's an important building. And I, I think we should encourage the building to do that. That's it. Right, thank you. Yes, and really the master plan helps building owners so that they get their approval once and then it can streamline future yeah. approvals. Okay, Commissioner Jefferson. I think it's all appropriate and I think the glass railing is fine. Okay, Commissioner Gustafson. Well, Sarah, your comments suggest that applicants don't like coming back to us over and over. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a matter of timing. <laughs> uh, I, I agree with my fellow commissioners. Sarah? Yes. I, I didn't hear you. Oh, yes. Yeah. I called you. Sorry. Oh, no. I, um, I, I am also in agreement and think this is all approvable and appropriate. Great. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Holford Smith, would you make the motion? Yes. Mm -hmm. In the matter of LPC 21 02245, 1 West 67th Street, Hotel des Artistes, Upper West Side, Central Park West, Historic District. A neo-Gothic style studio building with Tudor style elements designed by George M. Pollard, built in 1915-1918. Application is to modify the parapet, replace the skylight, and replace windows. I note that the style scale, materials, and details of the building are among the features which contribute to the special architectural and historic character of the Upper West Side Central Park West Historic District. Uh, I recommend approval with uh, one modification, finding that the proposed alteration to the rear parapet will not be visible in conjunction with the primary facade of the building. That the simple glass trailing will be seen in the context of a varied group of buildings of different, different, differing materials, profiles, and details. That the proposed parapet modification will require removing only plain brick on the secondary facade that the simple details of the proposed glass railing will help it blend in with the building and the sky, that the existing skylight, although an historic feature of this artist studio building, is utilitarian in design and is not visible from any public thoroughfare, therefore its removal will not detract from the building, that the proposed replacement skylight will closely replicate the historic in terms of materials, slope, 
and profiles will, and will only be minimally visible over the rear and side facades from West 68th Street. That the proposed windows at the east facade will match the historic windows in terms of operation, material, and finish. That the proportions of the, of the proposed single light casements will relate well to the larger panes of glass at the studio windows at the rear facade. That the windows at the north light court are only seen from a narrow corridor on West 68th Street and that the north light court does not feature a consistent fenestration pattern. Therefore, the proposed <coughs> single light windows will not detract from the unified facade. And that the work will not detract from the special architectural and historic character of the Upper West Side Central Park West Historic District. However, I find that the brick cladding of the side of the skylight is uh, anomalous and that the brick parapet should remain at the height it currently is and the side of the skylight be uh, faced in metal. Commissioner Goldblum, would you second that motion? Back in. All right, Rich, will you call the vote? Chair Carroll? Aye. Commissioner Bland? Aye. Commissioner Shamir Barron? Aye. Commissioner Chen? Aye. Commissioner Devonshire? Aye. Commissioner Goldblum? Aye. Commissioner Gustafson? Aye. Commissioner Jefferson? Aye. Commissioner Lutfi? Aye. And Commissioner Holford Smith? Aye. All right, with 10 in favor and unopposed, the motion carries. All right, thank you. So it's approved with that minor modification, and we'll move to the next item. And the next item is number 11, LPC 20-10. 381, an application for a certificate of appropriateness in the borough of Manhattan, block 1406, lot 17, 135 East 71st Street, AKA 140 East 72nd Street in the Upper East Side Historic District. This is an apartment building built in 1955. The application is to modify the building's base, replace storefront end fill, establish a master plan for the installation of signage and modify a master plan for the replacement of windows. Uh, commissioners, the applicants have joined the hearing. Uh, you now have control of the screen and you may uh, begin. Please state your name for the record and remember to unmute yourself. Good afternoon. I'm Josh Einiger. I'm the uh, board president of the building. Noel, are you there? Well, while well, Noel, Noel is an engineer who's still muted, but while she unmutes herself, I'm just going to go ahead and I'd like to introduce this project to you and, it, and we appreciate the opportunity uh, to bring it to you today. Noelle is the engineer and she's gonna have many of these details, but I wanted to give you a, a contextual overview of, of why we're seeking this, this approval. Uh, we're a nearly 100 unit co-op that's actually two different buildings, neighboring buildings. There's 135 East 71st, which is in the South and 140 East 72nd, which is in the North. They're completely separate towers unified by ground floor retail. Um, only 135 E71st is in a landmark district, which ends a little bit less than halfway up the block to 72nd. So in seeking approval, obviously for a unified and holistic look for our entire retail frontage, um, we obviously uh, need to uh, seek approval for the 135 building. Uh, the reason we're doing this project, the background is that we have an existing red granite lower cladding facade, which is in uh, a pretty bad state of disrepair after decades. Um, primarily, there's a large planter in front of 135, which is a landmark building, which is plagued with leaks and the freeze and thaw cycles over the years have led to serious degradation of the facade. Um, and to fix that condition would require demolishing that planter, completely rebuilding it. And we thought that we would look bigger and look at trying to unify the look for the entire block. Um, and, you know, create a more cohesive appearance that would benefit not just our building and our retail tenants, but also the entire community. So um, with that, um, Noel um, is our project engineer and we're happy to um, show you our project. So Noah, uh, you appear to be unmuted, um, but we can't hear you. We can't hear you, yeah. Thank you, Edith. <laughs> I 
thought it might be just me. <laughs> yeah, my earphones weren't working. My apologies. Let me just turn my volume up a bit. Okay, we can hear you now. Okay, perfect. I'll go back to the previous screen. Sorry. So as Josh said, we are half landmarked this building. As we see on the screen, uh, 71st Street side is landmarked, 72nd Street side is not. It's two connected buildings, 135 East 71st and 140 East 72nd. Here we have the 1980s tax photo. Uh, as you see in the 80s, the, there were no existing awnings. Uh, it was just a flat um, signage above the storefronts. This is the 71st Street side. So this is landmarked through this section on the southern side of the building. To give a little background on the storefronts, they are they are universally um, falling apart. Uh, as we look at the southern part of the street, we see the damage that's been caused over the years. The storefront wall is only four inches thick. So the granite under the windows is starting to fall apart and they've replaced them. We're going to, we're proposing to replace the entire storefront and uh, make the windows, uh, they'll, they'll bear on CMU blocks. And I'll show you the details a little bit later. As you see here, these photos are facing the LPC portion of the building. We're looking on the 71st street side. This is the planter that Josh mentioned on the corner of 71st and Lexington. Uh, our proposal is also calling to lower the planter slightly. The planter is quite high. It's about uh, uh, three foot six inches high and it uh, contains a lot of soil. So we are proposing to lower it to above the, the sprinkler system piping and uh, this will allow a little bit better view of the windows and uh, allow for a little better planting. This is a view of the doctor's office on the 71st Street side and the entrance as it is currently. Here we have the Lexington Avenue view. This is the southern portion, which is landmarked. It's connected at the middle to the northern portion, which is not landmarked. Uh, the LPC portion ends right at this store. So from where my uh, where the hand is right here to the left is landmarked, to the right is not. Here we have a view of the northern portion of Lexington Avenue and just the state of the current signs. When this, when the building was built, it was built with retractable awnings. This is just a view under one of those awnings of, uh, awnings that don't work anymore. This is on the northern portion of the building. Okay, here we have the southern building and this is the existing elevation. Our proposal is basically, we're, we're going to keep it basically the same. The windows will remain the same. The only thing we're changing to the Windows master plan is the color of the windows. They'll be powder coated in a dark gray or black to match the proposed granite. Uh, and otherwise we are proposing to lower the planters and we'll be changing the color of the granite from the red to a gray. Here we have the existing elevations of the, uh, the southern portion of the building that is landmarked. So the existing elevation, you see the storefronts and how low they are to the street. Uh, we're proposing to raise the sills slightly and to, be, the raising of the sills will allow us to install energy efficient glass and we 
can, if we widen the doors slightly, we'll be able to make the energy efficient glass more affordable because we'll be able to manuf manufacture it locally. These windows, as we get down a little bit closer to 72nd Street, become very huge. This is the existing vent that is not part of the landmark section. Uh, from this storefront over is landmarked. Uh, this sheet shows the differences between the current setup of the storefronts and what we are proposing. The red is the current and the black is the proposed. Now here we have an original rendering that was done back in the 50s of the building. It is showing the 72nd Street side, not the landmark 71st Street side. Uh, this is our proposed finish, which, you know, we use this as an inspiration. Uh, we're hoping to use this gray granite as opposed to the red that exists, which you'll see on this engraving at the 71st Street side um, of the architects of the building. This is the proposed granite for the uh, columns. Currently the columns are a white granite. We're not changing that. This is a blow up of the rendering at the 72nd Street side. Uh, this is the original rendering. This is what we're proposing. We're proposing simply to make the signage above uh, black and uh, otherwise we're trying to bring it back to what that rendering was at the beginning. Here's a rendered elevation of the 71st Street side showing gray uh, as opposed to the existing red granite. The next page shows the proposed rendering of the, uh, the elevations. Here we have the south side, which is the landmark side. And here we have the north side, which is not landmarked. Um, as you'll note, the, uh, the storefronts are on Lexington Avenue, which has a fairly steep slope from 71st Street to 72nd Street. And these, uh, when you get to these storefronts toward the 72nd Street side, uh, the slope is fairly, fairly significant. Here we have a proposed rendering of of the, uh, the building. This is as it exists today. This is how we're proposing uh, the gray granite will change. Uh, the windows will be a powder coated black as opposed to the white. Currently the master plan calls for white powder coat. We will not change the layout of the windows or the type of window, only the color of the, the powder coat. Uh, storefronts uh, will remain the same size except for the raising of the sill but we are proposing to change the color of the granite and to lower the planter on the 71st Street side. Here we have the detail of the signage. Uh, proposed signage uh, will adhere to all LP, LPC uh, requirements. It'll be 12 inches high by the length of the, of the storefront. Uh, proposed sections at the existing planter. Uh, the planter will be lowered, as you can see, it's approximately a one foot lowering of the planter. And uh, this is where the issues all started with the leakage down into the basement. Details at the planter show a slight reveal. Um, this is to give the entrance a little bit more texture and a little more, just a little more. Uh, here we have sections at the storefronts. The existing storefront, as you see, the existing awnings that were retractable that came with the building when it was built are here. The four inch wall that currently holds up the glass. We're proposing to move the entrance. Well, the entrance will stay at the same, at the same, uh, Sorry, sorry, I'm losing my mouse. The entrance will stay the same size. The glass will be pushed back slightly to sit on top of the CMU 
blocks. Here we have a section at the grills above the windows. These are the air conditioning units for the second floor apartments above. Uh, we're proposing a grill color to match the proposed granite. And here we have, uh, you know, we're gonna change up the lighting. Right now the existing sconces appear like this. Uh, we're proposing these sconces and a new door to the doctor's office. And that is the end of the presentation. Great, thank you very much. And I think we have one uh, commissioner with questions and we might have more. So Commissioner sure. Gustafson, please go ahead. Uh, you said that um, you chose the color of the granite based on that original rendering. Um, in that rendering, can you tell what color the, or the original storefront windows were supposed to be? No, that's the only rendering we have, and uh, we can't tell the color of the, of the storefront windows. Uh, the only thing we can tell is the gray granite, and we can see that originally they had uh, designed a black granite around the entrances on the 72nd Street side. The rendering itself is, uh, you know, it's the entire building. So when you look at it, it's a very small portion that has the, uh, the storefronts. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Commissioner Goldblum. Hi. Um, so I just had a question about those panels that are under the windows. Mm -hmm. um, they have like a kind of a, a beveled or raised panel detail. Is that right? That is correct. And I apologize. My uh, when I was switched over to controlling, it took my it took all my notes off my screen. OK, so I did so, not get to so those, are, those are kind of decorative. Is that the idea with them? Correct. If we look at this detail. Yes, it's a CMU block with a decorative metal detail. Uh, it would be the same on every storefront. The, the slope of that of the building is is very significant. It's a very large slope. So we're proposing that the sill be a minimum of 30 inches. And this panel will unify the look. I'm trying to get to. There you go. There we go. So by putting the panel in will unify the look and be able to also raise raise the glass windows and make them slightly smaller than what's there currently. Right now those windows are, you know, as you get down to this storefront, sorry, I'm losing my mouse. Okay, as you get down to these storefronts, the glass is enormous. So we would like to raise the sills to 30 inches, making the glass smaller in height, shorter, and put in these panels that, um, I mean, they're decorative. We could leave it just as the granite on the bottom, but we feel as though this gives it a little bit more interest and adds a little bit more to the look of the building. It's a very plain. And on front. top of so you have the, the granite coming up and then the metal, mm -hmm. and then a piece of the granite on top. Is that how it works? Correct. Correct. That, like little, immediately be like below purple. the window. This is going to be like a little white line on the top of, of the panels or light gray. It right. would be the gray of the granite cladding. Right. OK, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, commissioners, any other questions? Commissioner Jefferson, please go ahead. Just unmute yourself. Uh, you have two planters. Are you modifying both of them in a, in, with granite, but smaller pieces of granite? Like uh, let me get to, let me hope my mouse will cooperate with me. Okay. Okay, here we go. This planter, this is, my apologies. 
my mouse isn't okay. The planter to the right is the full planter that uh, we have the section through. To the left is actually a stairwell with a planter that, um, Josh, would you say that planter is maybe two feet wide by the yeah. doctor's office? It's a, it's a less significant planter than the one you see on the right that's in the corner with Lex. And it's built yeah, on the, yeah. the entrance to basically to mask the service stairs down into the basement of the building. So the stairs are a certain height and the planter can't be any shorter than that because obviously the stairs would stick out. So, um, so we can't lower that particular planter. We thought that for all the reasons that Noel said that lowering the right planter, which is of course the, the part of the building that everybody sees right at the corner would be um, for all bunch of reasons, uh, the right way to go. Thank you. Where am I? Uh... If you can see where my uh, my cursor is right now, that's where the second planter is. It's only in front of the doctor's office. To the left of that is the stairwell going down. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, any other questions? Okay, not seeing any hands raised at this time. We'll move to public testimony. And if you'd like to testify on this item, please raise your hand so we can identify you. And I'll turn it over to Lisa. Okay, thank you. We have one person that signed up, um, Friends of the Upper East Side Historic District. Hello. Um, Laura Varelli, representing Friends of the Upper East Side Historic Districts, Chair Carroll and Honorable Commissioners. We would like to commend the applicant for the thorough historic research and thoughtful approach to the restoration of this building. Friends Preservation Committee does not oppose the great recladding, especially since it's shown in the 1950s rendering of the design. We do not object the replacement of the office entry door the change of color of entry floor windows on 71st Street, nor the lowering of the planter at the corner of 71st Street and Lexington Avenue, a change that is more welcoming to pedestrians. Additionally, we believe the new lighting sconce is an improvement and more suited to the building's design. While the designation report marks this building as having no style, it iner inarguably displays hallmarks of the mid-century modern style that strongly contributes to the vitality of Lexington Avenue. Friends appreciates the removal of the non-complying awnings. However, we are concerned with the extreme uniformity of the proposed storefronts. We believe that the proposal might result in a homogenized, bland and boring look along the avenue detracting from the liveliness and richness of the streetscape. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And I didn't see anybody else with their hands raised. Okay. okay. Rich, do we have anyone who submitted written testimony? We do have a resolution from Community Board 8 recommending approval. Okay, thank you. All right, I'd like to turn back to the applicants and ask if you'd like to respond to any of the comments you've heard? Well, I, I'll just respond briefly about the, the, the comment about the uniformity of the storefronts. Um, so we, because we're built into a hill, uh, we had a lot of issues trying to figure out awnings or no awnings, what to do here. Because if you look at, so, and this is not your concern because it's the building that's not landmarked, but the north building, so the lower of the two renderings you're looking at, the second store from the left, that is so low to the sidewalk that even now it doesn't have an awning because it wouldn't, it wouldn't pass DOT regulations for the height that the awning has to be. And so we, we were going for a uniform, unified look. We thought that that's what would tie the block together as part of the neighborhood. It's a, it is a lively block. We've got a lot of retail that has managed to survive. We have only two vacancies right now across the street. Uh, I think there's only one store occupied. And so, um, you know, we, we, we thought very carefully about this and we thought that unifying it would kind of improve the experience, um, both for pedestrians and people who are shopping and, 
and, and the retailers who are, are trying to survive. All right, thank you. Okay, commissioners, do we have any final questions before we move to a discussion? All right, not seeing any questions. I'm starting to request to unmute you. So please um, accept that request and we'll make a motion to close the hearing. So Commissioner Bland, would you make a motion to close the hearing? So moved. And Commissioner Lutfi, would you second that motion? Second. Okay, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so the hearing is closed and we'll begin the discussion, um, which is you know, interesting. This is a building which, as was mentioned in the testimony, is was given no style <laughs> as its status in the designation report, which um, indicated that it was not a building for which this historic district was designated. Um, but it does sit right on the avenue across from another building in the district and then further north while its sister building is outside of the district, just north of that is the Upper East Side Historic District Extension. So that is the context in which we're looking at this application. Um, we also know that there is a rendering that shows a different palette than what was actually built. So that I think is also informative. So with that, why don't we start our discussion? Commissioner Goldblum, would you like to start this one? Okay. Um... We're Sylvan Bean, Rodney Dangerfield of Architectural District. Um, I, I agree with the uh, comments that that this is a, a modern, modern movement building. Uh, it may not be uh, the Barcelona Pavilion, but it, it certainly is a modern movement building. And as such, I think the applicant is treating it with appropriate respect and, and, and trying their best to do the right thing. And with that in mind, I think that the monotony or regularity that the testimony uh, critiqued was is actually a, totally appropriate looking at the rendering, knowing a little bit about the style, they were going for that. And I think it's appropriate. I think the color uh, and the material are appropriate. I think the reduction of the planter is appropriate. Um, <clears throat> the signage is a great improvement. The storefronts are fine. I, I know that I'm even okay with the change in the window color. Um, the only comment I would have, and it wouldn't restrain me from voting for the project, but I, I just think that the applicant will be happier with it is that that decorative panel under the window <laughs> should really be flush with the window. Should really be, uh, should not, there shouldn't be a little sandwich of granite on top and granite below. It should all be kind of flush with the window and part of the window assembly set back a little bit like you have it and it'll just, It'll look more like a bulkhead, which is a much more typical condition for storefronts, and it, it'll be less noticeable. But I, I think the application is is fine as it is. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Devonshire. I, I think Michael made a good suggestion about the bulkhead, but uh, otherwise, I think this is really fine and appropriate. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Chen. I think it is an improvement um, uh, over what is there currently. Okay. Commissioner Bland? Definitely an improvement, uh, but more importantly, I think it's appropriate. <laughs> Commissioner Lutfi? Commissioner Lutfi, just accept my request to unmute. Hi. Um, I, uh, I stepped away for a second, so I only heard Michael Goldblum. Okay. And I completely, I have to concur. I think this is, uh, this project is very well done. I don't uh, have a problem with the, uh, I, I love the granite base. I think it's an upgrade. I like the way the planters have been lowered. I think the regularity is helpful, especially in this neighborhood. Um, and especially with this kind of building, not having a problem with the black. I'm okay about the suggestion with the bulkhead and um, that's it. Okay, great. Commissioner Jefferson? I think it's appropriate. Okay, and Commissioner Gustafson? Uh, I, I think uh, we ought to be grateful to this applicant for 
caring about um, um, their building, even if it's a non-contributing building and they're caring about it in a, in a very detailed way. Um, I think it's all appropriate, the door, the planter, the, the granite color, the windows, sconces, the signage, mm -hmm. everything is fine. Um, I'm thrilled that they got rid of um, the awnings, which just seemed out of place, even though there were awnings originally on the building. Um, I was frankly shocked at the uh, comments of the advocates in the testimony that they wanted, they preferred a hodgepodge to, a, uh, to uniformity. Um, be careful what you wish for. If we all remember Broadway in the you know, 72nd Street area <laughs> in 1975, you know, be very careful. Okay, Commissioner Shamir Barron. Yeah, I think I think this is a, a difficult problem to try to integrate all of these um, at different sizes, the dramatic slope change. Um, but I think that they've done a, a good job and I understand where they've had to make their compromises um, and decisions uh, with regard to canopies and and the low kind of the lowest part of the uh, of the elevation. So um, all said, I think that they've done the best that they can do, and it's an improvement and it's appropriate. Okay, thank you. And Commissioner Holford Smith, uh, I agree. I think it's uh, what they've done is an improvement. My only concern, which apparently is not shared by anyone else. Um, I feel that the black storefronts are, um, are too heavy and too dark. I would have pre uh, preferred those to be like a natural aluminum. Um, but since no one else has raised that, I'm well, okay with it as is. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, so Commissioner Goldblum, would you make that motion? And just if you can also add the recommendation to eliminate that piece of granite from the bulkhead and make it part of the storefront assembly, that would be great. Okay. Regarding 135 East 71st Street, also known as 140 East 72nd Street, the Upper East Side Historic District, the application is to modify the building's base, replace storefront infill, establish a master plan for the installation of signage, and modify, modify a master plan for the replacement of windows. I note that the building is not one for which the Upper East Side Historic District was designated. Um, I, I do recommend approval, um, finding that the proposed work will not eliminate any or damage any significant architectural features that the new gray granite cladding at the East 71st Street and Lexington Avenue ground floors and planters will be simple in design and will harmonize with the building and streetscape and will be in keeping with the simple detailing often found at entrances and ground floors at buildings of this type and age. But the gray finished metal grills or through all HVAC units will be flush with the granite cladding and are easily removed if they are no longer needed. But the establishment of a master plan will provide for a unified pattern of signage over time. The proposed pin mounted black finished sign panels with brushed stainless steel lettering will be installed directly above the ground floor storefronts at the Lexington Avenue facade at the modern granite cladding and will be in keeping with the signage commonly found throughout the historic district in terms of type, placement, and size, that the cumulative amount of signage will be compatible with the size of the storefronts and will not overwhelm the building or the streetscape. That the proposed storefront infill at the Lexington Avenue facade, featuring metal framing bulkheads, display windows, transoms, and single entrance door configurations will be consistent with the design, details, and proportions of the original infill at this facade, and the proposed finish will not detract from the streetscape, streetscape that the storefront infill will recall the character of the historic storefronts found at, the, at buildings of the same type within the Stark District, that the work will not detract from the Upper East Side Stark District. However, we recommend that the applicant um, uh, recess the decorative bulkhead panels to align with the face of the storefront immediately above them and that the uh, granite sill be uh, located below the decorative panels on top of the granite base. Thank you and Commissioner Devonshire, would you second that motion? Mr. Yes, Devonshire, you're, you're muted. Sorry, you didn't notice it. I second that motion. Thank you. Rich, will you call the vote? Chair Carroll? Aye. Commissioner Bland? Aye. Commissioner Samir Barron? Aye. Commissioner Chen? Aye. Commissioner Devonshire? Aye. Commissioner Goldblum? Aye. Commissioner Gustafson? Aye. 
Commissioner Jefferson? Aye. Commissioner Lutfi? Aye. Commissioner Holford Smith? Aye. Did I miss somebody? I feel like I might have missed somebody. No, no, never mind. Um, sorry, with nine in favor and one opposed, the motion carries. Sorry, we can't hear you. Who's That's approved. Proposed? Thank you. Thank you very much to all of you. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. All right, we'll move to the next item now. Next item is number 12, LPC 20-10899, an application for a certificate of appropriateness in the borough of Manhattan, block 1392, lot 28. 61 East 77th Street in the Upper East Side Historic District. Uh, Neo-federal style school building with Beaux-Arts style features designed by Hard and Hasselman built in 1916. The application is to reconstruct the stoop and construct a barrier-free access ramp. Commissioners, the uh, applicant has joined the hearing. You now have control of the screen and you may begin your presentation. Please remember Hi, hello, I'm uh, Christopher Stone and the architect for this project. And uh, it is located at 61 East 77th Street in Manhattan. Um, our proposal is to add a handicap accessible ramp to the first floor of the building. Uh, the building was constructed in 1916. It's a Hardy Hasselman architect design, uh, neo-federal style with Bose Arts uh, detailing. It's 10 stories. In height, uh, the upper nine stories are residential. The first floor and lower level are uh, commercial. It's uh, currently occupied by Lenox Hill uh, Radiology, and they were cited uh, for not having handicap accessibility. Uh, the plan is, uh, if you see in the lower uh, part of this uh, lower strip, you'll see our, our building here. Uh, as it exists now. Uh, we're planning on removing the front stoop because there's an existing trip hazard there, which you'll see more of this later, and adding a ramp behind the historic fence on the right, which will extend at least 50% of its length, which is 24 feet in front of the building at uh, 65 East 77th, which was constructed in 1965 and has a contemporary uh, motif to it, limestone uh, smooth on the first two floors. So let's move to the next slide. I'm trying. <laughs> okay. okay, here we go. So we can see here the uh, location of the site, 61 East 77th Street. It's on the Upper East Side here. And it's located in the uh, Upper East Side historic district right here. And then on 77th Street, the actual location of the uh, site is highlighted in yellow. This slide shows the existing building as it is today and the historic fence on the right and left. There's a on grade entry here to an elevator which goes to the lower level of Lenox Hill Radiology. Uh, and it only goes down. There's no facility for it to go up because there is a residential unit located directly above that elevator. This is the entry. Here are the piers existing on each side of the entry. Our proposal is to go behind these piers and extend down covering this unused doorway over, leaving this doorway accessible and you'll see in our rendering below, proposed rendering, where the ramp extends up, would be black in color to harmonize with the existing historic fences. A portion of the fence would be removed here. We would replace the handrails and replace the stoop. Uh, and slides that follow, you will see that uh, the stoop has a very unfortunate short step right at the uh, entry doors, existing entry doors there. Going to the next slide, we see a uh, closer photograph of the entry as it exists today. Historic fence, iron fence left and right. Steps go up three steps, stoop to a landing, and there's a very short step right at the entry doors. 
See further down, this is where the ramp would extend. This door would be covered over, it is unutilized. This door would remain, it is a secondary egress for residents uh, above. There's a close up of the fence, historic fence on the left of the entry. Detailed scroll work, all uh, first floor, first two floors, all limestone. Uh, this is carved, but has been uh, painted over the years with the historic color uh, paint, apparently because of graffiti or vandalism, I'm uncertain. This is looking to the right of the entry, and this is where we intend to put the ramp through this area uh, here. <clears throat> this is on the east side of the entry. This portion of the historic fence would be removed. This would remain. Most of this portion would remain and the ramp would extend through this area. On the top, we have two historic photos from 1940s, tax map photos. One taken from the east looking west. This is the original 1916 building here, goes up 10 stories. This one is taken from the west. This is where 65, East 77th is now, was constructed in 1965. This building was removed and it is 10 stories high and uh, built in a contemporary style. It doesn't have uh, a lot of architectural significance. <clears throat> you can see that building down below here in this existing uh, conditions photo. On the left, once again, we see the area where the ramp is proposed to pass through. And this is a, uh, on the right, we see a photo this is where the ramp will pass through the section of historic fence would be removed. Now we look at the front entry. This is that uh, tripping hazard step that exists right now. It's approximately a five inch step. Uh, the existing exit doors are approximately 30 inches wide each. Uh, in fact, extend slightly over that. And it uh, currently is a tripping hazard, not only for handicapped people uh, uh, and for egress, but also ambulatory people. Uh, it's just not something you expect when you walk out the door at that point. So we go inside of the uh, common lobby to the left. This is the doorway it goes down three steps to the elevator, which only goes down for Lennox Hill Re Radiology. Straight ahead, this is the entry to the private residential lobby. To the right, this is the entry to Lennox Hill Radiology first floor offices and uh, labs. This is more of a close-up direct on of that entry door. Another photo of the residential entry. This is inside of the re private residential entry lobby, which is inside of the common lobby. There are uh, mailboxes here. The other side of these mailboxes is where the elevator, which only goes down, is located to service the lower level of Lenox Hill Radiology. This is the private residential elevator as it exists, a view from inside of the elevator. And then this is a view of the elevator, which you enter at a grade level and only goes down. And you can see the three steps up here, uh, no possibility of uh, adding a, uh, a handicap uh, lift in that area. It's just too, too tight of an area. If we look at the plan, <clears throat> This is the existing elevator, which we enter a grade level and only goes down. These are the three steps we just looked at and the entry into the common lobby. Here is the existing stoop and that short step just outside of the existing doors. This is the entry into Lenox Hill Radiology first floor with a ramp up. <clears throat> this is the window areaway to the east, window areaway to the west. And the lower part of this slide is our proposed handicap ramp would come up and we would re we propose to reconstruct the stoop without that short step at the entry doors, install wider entry doors in the same opening that exists now, removing the existing and you'll see in our rendering, leaving the transom above, but filling up the entire space with the doors providing a turning circle and then reconstructing the stoop. Then the reconstructed stoop would extend 10 inches further into the sidewalk. 
We have our <coughs> existing ears would remain either side. We would need to carve a small section for the handrail uh, graspable surface an inch and a half into the back of the piers so that you would have a graspable uh, handrail all the way past the piers. It begins just short of the existing stairway egress for the residential component. And uh, we have our uh, required uh, rail, rail extension to either side. Handrails would be replaced on each side and a center rail, which would be required by New York City code based on the required egress width would be added to the center, which would also be an added safety feature for a handicapped people coming to the landing so that the edge of that stair is more visible. If we look at it in a large plan here, this is in a large plan of our ramp ending here, the handrail turning around, we would have an op door operator button on the right side, would actuate the left hand door, we would come in actuator button here to actuate the button for access to Lennox Hill radiology. This would be the reconstructed stoop with the center and the right and left railing. If we look on the left here, we see the egress path out of the first floor. Uh, ambulatory people, of course, go straight down. Uh, handicap would have to exit to the left down the ramp. Here we have the existing elevation of the existing entry, historic fence left and right, piers left and right, this is the non-historic section here, 1965, contemporary, just flat limestone and brick above. This is the proposed elevation. We would fill out the existing width of the entry with conforming doors. Uh, the left one would be actuated. This would be our ramp coming up with a black painted handrail to match the existing iron fence left and right the iron fence components that would be removed would be stored on site for possible future reuse somewhere. Uh, the piers uh, are existing in concrete. Perhaps at one point they were limestone. Uh, taking a look at them at the site and the, the pier caps appear to be original limestone uh, painted to match the uh, first floor, first and second floor of the building, which is all the limestone is painted. Uh, but the piers themselves have been replaced with concrete or perhaps they were originally concrete. I, I'm uncertain, uh, but that is how they exist at this time. There was previously a, uh, an application uh, to landmarks to remove uh, at least one of the piers and replace it. Uh, and that was previously approved and completed for a prior uh, installation of the MRI equipment to the lower level. This is a section through the existing stoop where we see our five inch step at the door here, which is a tripping hazard, and then down three steps to the existing uh, sidewalk. On the right here, we see the infilled area that would be the uh, line profile of the new stoop replaced and would extend 10 inches further out into the sidewalk area. We currently have an application into DOT uh, for a revocable consent for that additional uh, 10 inches. And uh, they're also in conversation with the sidewalk vaults about uh, revocable consent, which is not affiliated with, with this application. You can see here the uh, actuator button would be on top of the handrail on the right. All of the electrical wiring for that would be run within the tube of the handrail. Uh, we propose the handrail to be black painted, as I stated before, to match the iron fence uh, color, and it would be with a, a matte finish paint. Uh, most likely the material, the under material will be stainless steel so that we do not have a rusting pitting uh, issue in the future. Oops. <laughs> Sorry, I have to watch the... Uh, so this is a section through the ramp. You can see approximately 50% of the ramp is in front of the 1965 component here. Uh, the rest of the ramp passes behind the columns and comes up to a reconstructed stoop. 
Now, I believe that I skipped over a slide. I'm going to go back and see if I can get to it. Uh, I have a slide that shows the, there it is. So we have this step here. This is uh, the owner of the building wouldn't allow the contractor to take a, a more significant probe of the, of the existing stoop. This existing stoop is coated with a non-skid paint uh, in a color that more or less uh, matches the sidewalk color. But you can see where it's worn off that that is clearly originally limestone. And it is, uh, I, I would say that all of the areas around the entry, if we go back another slide or two, you can see this lower portion, clearly that is originally limestone uh, down in those areas. Okay, your section. And going back to the proposal, this is the rendering of the proposed entry ramp passing behind the existing piers, leaving the historic fence section here, leaving as much of the fence section as possible here where the ramp passes through, the ramp would terminate onto a reconstructed stoop. The stoop uh, currently is proposed to be reconstructed and painted with the non-skid finish that it currently has, adding a center rail to make it conform with New York City building code, and then having a new handrail on the opposite side, replacing the doors at this point with wider doors for accessibility. And that is our presentation. Thank you very much. Commissioners, do we have questions? Commissioner Gustafson, I thought your hand was up, but maybe it, your question was answered in, in the presentation. Uh, my question was answered. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So why don't we see if we have anyone here to testify on this item? So if you're here to speak, please raise your hand so we can identify you. And I'll turn it over to Lisa who can walk us through the testimony. Okay, great. Um, so it was fun to be up the east side. Laura, I just brought you in. Good afternoon, everyone. Laura Varialli represents Friends of the Upper East Side Historic Districts, Chair Carroll, and Honorable Commissioners. Friends supports and applauds the applicant for making this building accessible. We would have preferred, however, a solution that does not disturb the building's perfect symmetry nor encroach on the sidewalk. When presenting its plans to the community, the applicant very thoroughly explained why an internal solution would not be viable on the west side street level door. However, there are two street level doors to the east on the adjacent building, one of which the applicant is proposing to remove. We urge the applicant to work with the commission to exhaust all possibilities of a solution internal to the building before approving the rep. If internal accessibility is indeed not possible, Friends Preservation Committee does not oppose the proposed ramp. We'll amend the laws with the historic fence, but we believe the solution to be sensible and have a minimal impact to the building. Friends takes issue, however, with the change of design of the two handrails on each side of the stoop. Mm -hmm. We believe that the rep that replicating the existing design is yes, much more appropriate right now, but... this neo federal apartment building. And we suggest that the center railing of the stoop, if required by code, also replicates this design. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And next we have uh, Kelly Carroll. Kelly Carroll, Historic Districts Council. HDC found this proposal to be sensitively executed, but we asked the commission to examine the details of the proposed ironwork, which appears slightly heavy. The new ironwork should read as secondary to the landmarks existing decorative ironwork. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Kelly. And then um, George Calderar. I'm George Calderaro, 
from the New York Metro chapter of the Victorian Society in America. And we comment on this application to praise the sensitive proposal for introducing barrier-free access in a way that does minimal visual and physical damage to a historic facade, despite the removal of a small section of historic ironwork. It helps that the historic forecourt configuration allows the ramp to be tucked behind masonry and our ironwork that will help obscure it. We recommend that the new railings be as slender as possible to avoid competing with the historic ironwork. The, the section of historic fence that has to be removed be salvaged and also stored on site. And that the painting of the new stainless steel railings be carefully specified so that the paint doesn't quickly fail, leaving exposed stainless steel. Finally, if the existing steps, which appear to be coated, are stone, then the proposal to replace them with pig pigmented concrete would need to be revisited. Okay, thank you. And so that's everybody with their hand raised. Thank you. Rich, do we have any written testimony? We do have a resolution from Manhattan Community Board 8 recommending approval. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'd like to turn back to the applicant now and ask if you would like to respond to the comments you've heard. I'm uh, sure. Okay, uh, I would say that uh, certainly we could slend make the, uh, the vertical components of the handrail more slender. Uh, the horizontal graspable components uh, need to meet uh, specific code requirements. So uh, they, they couldn't be reduced beyond a certain point, but certainly the uh, vertical elements could be reduced uh, perhaps to the same thickness as the existing uh, railing. Uh, certainly would have also would not have a problem changing it to uh, regular steel. We're just concerned about uh, you know, maintenance if they're chips. Uh, also relative to the uh, comment about the, you know, the existing railings, handrails, uh, on either side of the entry as they exist now. Uh, they, from my observation, they did not appear to be uh, original or historic uh, components uh, that might have been there when it was built in 1916. Uh, but that, that was my observation. Um, as far as uh, an internal stairway where that uh, existing door uh, is being uh, covered over, uh, the door has been utilized in quite some time. There's uh, occupied space inside of the uh, the building there, and to to cut into there to make an entry to a ramp. Uh, number one, I don't think we have enough room because we barely barely uh, make it. We would have to uh, extend it to the very limit of the building and take out the other door as well. Uh, so, and then we'd be going through the exterior structural uh, walls of both 61 and 65, 77th Street. So it makes it uh, uh, extremely uh, impractical, I believe. All right, thank you. Commissioners, do we have any other questions after listening to the testimony or the response? Okay, not seeing any questions, I'm going to start requesting to unmute and we'll move to mm -hmm. our discussion. So Commissioner Chen, would you make a motion to close the hearing? So moved. Thank you. And Commissioner Gustafson, would you second that motion? Second. Great. Thank you. Okay. So I think this Spoke. is a very, hello? You a very, sorry. <laughs> 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the hearing is closed. <laughs> I don't know what's with me today. <laughs> so um, we have um, this proposal for reconstructing the stoop, installing the ramp. It involves modifying ironwork, and, um, and there's been some testimony about ironwork and materials of the stoop. I think the applicant presented um, all of the uh, studies to show <laughs> why they couldn't do something internally. Um, but let's go around and have our discussion. Um, Commissioner Holford-Smith, do you wanna start with this one? 
Sure. Um, I think in general, this is a um, well done application, um, taking advantage of the space behind the columns and the uh, areaway fence is a good one, a good strategy. Um, doesn't seem to be an internal strategy that would work. So I think it, just in concept, I think it's a good um, approach. I think that, that it does need a little more work in the details and perhaps that could be done with staff. I think um, I concur with the testimony about the railings. Um, I think that using just utilitarian sort of ADA style uh, railings everywhere is not appropriate. So perhaps something more uh, reminiscent of the original gate would be better um, for the railings that are on the stoop as well as, as for us on the ramp. Um, and as for the material of the, of the stoop itself, I think that, um, you know, we don't, I don't think we know what that is. It seems odd that it would be limestone, um, but I think it, you know, further investigation would be warranted. Um, and again, that can be worked out with staff. Um, and if it turns out to be concrete, then I suppose the non-skid finish should be okay. But if it's stone, then I think we might want to revisit that decision. Um, I think that's it. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Goldman. Okay, um, it is interesting that the chair is, uh, seems to be averse to voting. I can't imagine why. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, anyway, the, um, the, uh, I agree with everything Anne said. I think, you know, this comes up all the time. Um, you know, the ADA has a certain template for railings and many applicants seem to default to it. Uh, I myself have never done the deep dive and maybe the staff would take this opportunity to do it and try to figure out what is required and what is just, they drew it that way, and but it doesn't, it's not required. <laughs> and um, I think that that might form a, a basis for future evaluations of similar railing designs that come up all the time. Um, otherwise, I think it is a good solution. Uh, I think the applicant might consider putting the balls back on top of those pillars, it'd be nice. Mayor Devonshire. Commissioner Devonshire, is he? I don't see him now. Okay, let's move on. To Lee, I believe he left for the day. Let's move on to Commissioner Chen. Yeah, I think uh, I agree with uh, the commissioner's comment. I think the uh, this is an appropriate design, and uh, uh, as to the material, I think the. Uh, uh, the handrail could be further studied, uh, and uh, uh, being the uh, the applicant is named after stone, I, I presume he will find the right uh, material for the uh, the final uh, product with the staff. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Bland. Um, occasionally, uh, building configurations uh, allow for a reasonably easy solution, and I think this one. Uh, is one of those few that seem to allow that to occur. Uh, that's taking nothing away from the architect who uh, I think skillfully has um, inserted this ramp uh, in a way that does not, uh, in, in my judgment, in any way detract from the um, beauties of this uh, Bozar building. It's lucky also, I think, that the building next door was extended, allowing the length of the ramp to occur and that there's an, an, an unused door also right there. So a whole, whole lot of things have conspired to make this uh, happen so, so nicely. I wish more buildings could allow this uh, kind of ease of a ramp being inserted. So many don't. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Commissioner Lutfi. Um, I, I happen to agree that this is overall a very well executed um, solution. I do have to say, having been on the inside of this building, having been on the outside of this building and the inside on the outside, every time I pass it or go into it, I think this is like the most beautiful like radiology center in the city. <laughs> But when, as soon as you get in there, you think, oh my God, 
You cannot navigate this space. It is horrible Warren in there. I completely appreciate all the challenges that the applicant has faced trying to move this internally. It's just not possible. Um, so I think this is a, a, a terrific solution and I agree that the applicant should continue to study and work with staff about the stone and um, the railings. Thank you, Commissioner Jefferson. Um, I think this is an elegant design and it's, it's, it's very interesting to me because of the abstraction, you know, you have vertical linear elements, you have horizontal ones, and then you have diagonal ones, and they all come together in a nice composition. Um, I do agree that perhaps thinness in the ramp would be better, that can be done, but I think it's, it's a good solution. Okay, thank you. And Commissioner Gustafson? You know, I try not to have MRIs, but when I do, <laughs> this is a personal favorite, um, which uh, along with Commissioner Lutfi, it test, it's a testimony to the condition of our commissioners. Um, I almost felt like recusing myself because believe it or not, I've actually negotiated these stairs on crutches. Um, <laughs> So, so this this is a uh, this is a uh, a great project. I love it. Uh, I do uh, think that they ought to try to figure out uh, what the original material for those uh, stairs that the, the entry and the stoop uh, was, and uh, and try to replicate that if possible. So, if they could work with the staff on that, that'd be fine. Great. And Commissioner Shamir Barron, uh, count me in on the patients list. <laughs> 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 uh, but I agree this, uh, you know, the, the presence of this extra area precinct in front of the building seems to be a perfect place to solve the ramp situation and I, it's, it's long coming here. It's, it's always, I've always wondered how it was that there was not um, a handicap access into the building. So, um, and I think that they've solved it in a smart way. I do think that the rail, um, uh, both the, 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 the rail in competition with the existing um, iron uh, grill work, a, as well as with other uh, sort of accessible um, rail systems have to be studied here. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually not convinced even about that center rail, but um, I can accept it as it's proposed and I think it's necessary. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I think we have a consensus um, to support this, um, finding it appropriate, although asking the applicant to continue to restudy the iron work both on the ramp as well as on the stairs and to do further investigation and to restudy the material for the stoop pending that investigation. So with those two recommendations, Anne, would you make the motion? Yes. Yeah. In the matter of LPC 20-10899, 61 East 77th Street in the Upper East Side Historic District, a neo-federal style school building with Beaux-Arts style features designed by Hardy and Hasselman, built in 1916. The application is to reconstruct the stoop and construct a barrier-free access ramp. I note that the building's style, scale, materials, and details are among the features that contribute to the special architectural and historic character of the Upper East Side Historic District. I recommend approval with modifications, finding that the removal of portions of the historic areaway ironwork and the reconstruction of the stoop will aid in providing barrier-free access into the building at the primary entrance in the least intrusive manner possible. That the areaway wall and ironwork will partially obscure the ramp, thereby helping it maintain a discreet presence. That the materials of the proposed ramp consisting of concrete paving and black metal pipe railings will be harmonious with materials found at the sidewalk and, fence, and facade, and that the removal of the service door at the modern addition will not detract from the historic character of this building, and the limestone infill will match the adjacent facade material. However, I find that the original stone material, details, and finish of the stoop remains uncertain, and probes are required to make that determination, and that the design and details of the railings do not relate well to the historic ironwork. Therefore, I recommend that the applicant continue to work with staff to refine the materials, details, and finish of the stoop, that the stoop be replaced with natural stone rather than concrete, that the color of the concrete ramp match the stone of the stoop once that has been determined, 
and that railings be restudied to better harmonize with historic ironwork. Just one clarification that the material of the stoop is really pending the investigation. If it was found to okay, be originally right. concrete, then that might be okay, or originally granite, then that would be okay. Okay, so um, Commissioner, uh, sorry, Gustafson, would you second that motion? Second. Okay, Rich, will you call the vote? Chair Carroll? Aye. Commissioner Bland? Aye. Commissioner Shamir Barron? I'm sorry, can you one more time? Aye. Thank you. Commissioner Chen? Aye. Commissioner Goldblum? Aye. Commissioner Gustafson? Aye. Commissioner Jefferson? Aye. Commissioner Lutfi? Aye. And Commissioner Holford Smith? Aye. Okay, with nine in favor and none opposed, the motion carries. Thank you. And we'll move to the next item. And final item. Yes, uh, the last item of the day, item number 13. This is LPC 21-02194, an application for a certificate of appropriateness in the borough of Manhattan, block 1511, lot one, 969 Park Avenue, AKA 961 to 971 Park Avenue and 101 to 105 East 82nd Street and the Park Avenue Historic District. A Renaissance Revival style apartment building design by Pickering and Walker, built in 1911 to 12. The application is to establish a master plan governing the future installation of windows. Commissioners, the applicant has joined the hearing. Uh, please unmute yourself, state your name for the record, and just click on the screen to activate the slides and you may begin. Chair Carroll and commissioners, my name is Peter Folsom from Panorama Windows. I'm happy to be before you today to uh, present a master plan for window replacement at 969 Park Avenue. Um, 969 Park Avenue is a Renaissance Revival building uh, constructed 1911-1912 by Pickering and Walker. Um, it does form a very graceful and lovely part of the historic district and um, the, uh, the building uh, ownership, uh, the, the tenancy are very interested in maintaining it that way. Uh, I'd like to read a letter uh, from the uh, chairman of the board, uh, Roland De Silva, if I might. Um, his letter goes, thank you for this opportunity to address your commission on behalf of the board of directors of 969 Park Avenue residents. My name is Roland De Silva and I serve as the president of the board of directors. It is with great pleasure that I'm here to request your permission to allow the residents of 969 to continue to restore our building's windows using high quality six over one pane configured windows. Let me begin with some history. As you're undoubtedly aware, 969 was built during America's golden age, just at the beginning of the 20th century, a little more than 100 years ago. The building was originally built as grand duplex apartments, three apartments per floor. In the late 1940s, as the demand for housing escalated, the building was cut up into simplexes with six apartments per floor. In the 1950s, the building was converted to cooperative ownership. The offering plan from 1958 indicates that the windows were of wood construction in a six over one style and in good to fair condition. For the most part, the windows have been part of a six over one design for more than 60 years. Since that time, the board has had the requirement that the windows must be replaced with six over one using Pella or similar quality wood windows uh, upon transfer uh, of an apartment. And that's wood windows with an aluminum exterior. Um, as do my colleagues on the board, I believe that maintaining the six over one window style is not only in keeping with the building's long-standing look, but also is historically accurate. Moreover, nearly every window in the building on Park Avenue and East 82nd Street facade has been replaced with six over one windows. One of the last remaining apartments that do not contain this window style is undergoing renovations. However, the window replacement has been held up 
because of the commission's desire to have the shareholders replace windows with six over six style windows. This requirement would result in a hodgepodge look with, over, with six over one windows thrown in when nearly all the others are six over one. As I write this note, our building is undergoing a nearly $3 million facade restoration work. There is no plan, nor are there funds available to undertake a complete window replacement. Therefore, keeping with the long-standing policy to replace the windows with six over ones will undoubtedly enhance the building's appearance, maintaining property values in keeping with the historic district and the Carnegie Hill Upper East Side historic area. Thank you. Um, and I go back to the condition report from the Landmarks Preservation Commission, um, also stating that there are numerous possible six over one double hung sash throughout the building uh, or replace with sash with this uh, appropriate historic configuration. Um, so here are our, uh, our slides uh, for the presentation. Um, and let's see. I'm having a little trouble with my cursor, getting it to move to the next slide. You just try clicking on it again and it should activate. Oh, you're right. Thank you very much. Okay. This shows the location of, of 969 in the district uh, on Park Avenue. Um, here is the condition report, which uh, obviously all the commissioners uh, have access to and, and which I just referred to. This is the original historic photo from the, uh, I believe the, the 1940s. And it does show uh, at least some six over six windows in it, I've been told. Uh, I have not really been able to uh, see them myself, but I have not used a magnifying glass. And this shot from the 1980s um, does show a basically consistent six over one pattern. Oh, sorry, going a little fast. Um, here are two shots of the building. Um, the west facade and the south facade showing a very consistent fenestration pattern of six over one windows. And the inserts at the top of the page show the existing six over one double hung windows, all with a uniform exterior finish. More of the front facade of the building as it stands today. This is of the south facade. And this is of the uh, partial facade that we are asking to have included in the master plan. The master plan will not be including the windows at the back of the building, which are not um, visible to public view. Uh, you can notice in, in this shot of the east facade that there are some small bathroom double hung windows which do have Munton grids and some do not have Munton grids. Um, those are being changed in the master plan. Uh, as you'll see in the um, slide that shows the uh, elevation of the windows, those will be, become four over one double hung windows. This slide shows a, uh, a historic brick mold and, and the, uh, the rear of the building. Here we see uh, along Park Avenue what we're proposing uh, and the south facade and then that small east facade that I was talking about. The courtyard windows uh, are not proposed to be in the master plan because as the commissioners are doubtlessly all aware, uh, there are sometimes some requirements for vents uh, or air conditioning units or other things that are permitted in non-visible windows. And it makes it just a lot easier 
on the commission and on everybody if they can be done separately. This is showing the uh, existing condition, six over one in the two sizes and one over one in the small bathroom windows. Here is the proposed for that same Park Avenue facade. This is for the south facade, showing the six over one and the one over one. And this is the proposed showing six over six and four over four, uh, four over one, excuse me. And the east facade. This is showing the, uh, the vertical, the original uh, wood double hung windows on the left. Um, this is the proposed in the middle, uh, in the uh, existing in the middle and the proposed on the, uh, on the right hand side, which would be an aluminum clad uh, window. These are the horizontal. You'll notice that we are replacing uh, the, the current or um, rectangular panning with an articulated panning on all new uh, windows to be installed. So that will be an improvement. And that is basically it. Um, I, I think that uh, it has been the commission's uh, stance in the past that when buildings have had a uniform uh, long-standing um, policy of fenestration that the commission has respected that before. Um, in the case of say 925 Park Avenue, um, I note that the uh, buildings around um, 969 are not nearly as careful in their fenestration. Um, 930 Park Avenue has some nine over ones on the third floor. Um, 960 Park has a couple uh, eight over eights uh, on some of the lower floors. Uh, 983 has some six over ones and eight over ones in a spotty pattern on its fenestration. Um, Loyola at uh, 978 Park Avenue, a, a much smaller building, does have a lovely unified facade and it does look very nice. And then there's the new building at 985 Park Avenue, uh, which has all new windows with Muntins. Um, 969 has taken great care of their building and, and great pride in it. Uh, and we ask that the commission allow that to continue. All right, thank you, Peter, for your presentation. Commissioners, do we have any questions? Okay, Commissioner Lutfi, and just unmute yourself. Maybe the applicant already answered this question and I missed it. So how many windows in total do you have in this building? And then how many of those windows are six over one? They're, they're all currently six over ones or one over ones. And I'm sorry, I do not have the exact count. Okay, well, do you know what percentage are one over ones? It, it's just the bathroom windows. And, and I would say that probably less than 10%. So they're okay, they're secondary windows. Yes, they are. They, they are. they are just the small bathroom windows. Okay. And, and you can see from the uh, from the front facade, uh, there there are, are really uh, none that are that are there. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, I don't know the exact number of windows for you. I apologize for that. No, no, you you uh, that's okay. I have we have the picture. Thank you. Okay, great. It's a very unified, very nice looking building. It is. All right. Other questions. Okay, not seeing any other questions. Why don't we move to public testimony? And if there's anyone here who'd like to speak, please raise your hand so we can identify you and I'll turn it over to Lisa. 
Okay, great. We have one person signed up, uh, friends there from your side. And Laura, I brought you in. Thank you. Um, Laura Variale, representing Friends of the Upper East Side Historic Districts. Chair Carroll and Honorable Commissioners. Friends appreciates the initiative of the applicant to propose a consistently apply master plan for the windows of this Renaissance Revival apartment building. We also applaud the decision to maintain the detailed trim, an element that is missing from some of the windows. While the existing six over one configuration is described in the designation report as possibly historic, we have found photographic evidence dated from 1933 from the Museum of the City of New York collection that clearly shows six over six windows throughout the building. This photo is included on the written version of this testimony. While we appreciate the applicant maintaining one of the sashes multi-light, Friends Preservation Committee believes that the original historic six over six configuration is the most appropriate and preferable for this master plan. So many of the Park Avenue buildings have already lost this layer of architectural detail by replacing their historic windows with single plane glazing in the name of unity. It would be most unfortunate to include 969 Park in this list. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And I don't see any other hands raised. Okay, thank you. Rich, do we have any written testimony? Yes, we do have a resolution from the community board recommending approval. Okay, thank you. All right, Peter, would you like to respond to the comments made in testimony? I think we'd all like to have the absolute knee plus ultra. Um, and if we could wave a wand and, and make it happen so that it happened quickly, gracefully and uniformly, it would be lovely. I think the financial burden of doing that all in one fell swoop would be overwhelming that very few, if any buildings would be able to do. Uh, and I think that that having the well-maintained uniform facade that is there now, um, backed up by the building's very consciously demonstrated desire to make it look that way, would weigh enough to have the commissioners uh, allow this to continue and, and be a contributing part of the Upper East Side. Okay. Thank you. All right, commissioners, any final questions? Uh, I'm gonna start unmuting you so that we can make a motion to close the hearing. So commissioner, sorry, commissioner Holford-Smith, would you make a motion to close the hearing? So moved. And commissioner Lutfi, would you second that motion? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the hearing is closed. So this is interesting. You know, we have, we see this regularly, applications for large apartment buildings, um, large pre-war apartment buildings in various uh, revival styles where all of the historic windows have been removed prior to designation. And um, we have often, as we know, approved a change in configuration. Um, that usually is accompanied with an improvement in details as is being proposed here with the panning and, um, and uh, you know, the long-term goal for uniformity. And often we're looking at a proposal for a one over one double hung window in lieu of the original six over six or eight over eight multi-light windows. And um, many times when we struggle whether to determine whether that one over one is appropriate for the each particular building given its architectural detail and style, um, we often suggest that they do a compromise, which is very much like the proposal we're seeing today, which is a six over one and a four over one. So um, in this case, this particular building had all of its historic windows removed prior to designation and has primarily six over one windows with the one over one at the bathroom. And they're proposing the six over one double hung window with a new panning that will replicate the historic brick mold 
and further replacing the existing one over ones with a four over one um, to be closer to the historic configuration. So I think this is um, actually a, a, an approach that we have suggested for buildings of this type in the past. Um, so that's providing some context and maybe leading the discussion a little bit, but why don't I turn it over to you? Commissioner Shamir Barron, would you like to start this one? Sure. Um, I actually think that all of the points that you made, one that it was uh, that the windows were replaced uh, prior to the designation and that they were not taken to a kind of an extreme you know, to a one over one or, or uh, they, they do retain an aspect of the, of the historic configuration. I think that six over one may not be the purest version, but I think it still, um, it, it conjures that, that, older, that older set. And I think that it's in that, in this case, um, because they are all almost there um, and, and uniform right now, to be able to retain that six on top is really important. So I think it's worthwhile and, and a good thing to do a master plan that proposes the six over one and that changes the one over one secondary windows to four over one. That's very convincing too. So I'm very much in support of this. Great, thank you. Commissioner Holford Smith. Yeah, I agree. Um, normally I'm a, a, be quite a stickler in terms of windows, but I think um, having the, the history of, of the, or the existing condition of the six over one um, and the uniformity of it, um, I'm, I can, I can, I can vote in favor of this. Okay, thank you. And Commissioner Goldblum? Um, I agree. I think that um, another, I don't think that consistency is ever the priority in these considerations. Um, but I do think that um, one, you know, in addition to the factors that other people mentioned, this building is relatively, um, decorated. It has a lot of belt courses and paneling and a very elaborate cornice and <laughs> window surrounds. It's not, it's not as vanilla as some of the other buildings that we've seen. So I think in addition to the other factors cited, I, I would say that, that uh, the, um, the level of detail and articulation helps support the uh, status quo position. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Chen. Oh, I, did we lose Commissioner Chen? I guess we did. All right, Commissioner Lutfi. Um, I happen to agree that with my fellow commissioners that this is appropriate. I wanna commend the building, uh, the applicant for uh, really taking a lot of care uh, in terms of making sure that the, the building's windows are uniform and not doing a straight aluminum window, doing an aluminum clad wood, which is a better quality window. Um, and I do strongly believe that a six over one speaks to the history of this building, even if it is not the original window and it, it definitely works with the architecture. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Jefferson. I support this application. Okay, Commissioner Gustafson. Yeah, I'm, I'm usually the tough one on windows too, um, uh, but the applicant had me at hello here. Um, <laughs> you know, the, uh, the testimony, um, you know, asked for the most appropriate, and I think we all agree that six over six will be the most appropriate, but our standard here is not most appropriate, it's appropriate. And, um, and we consider things like the character of the building, the detail and the interest level of the building and what it adds to it and what, what's needed in, in, the, in, in the windows. Um, and here, um, you know, it, as uh, Commissioner Goldblum pointed out, there's, there's more going on in this building and six over one, I think we're lucky that they went to that in the first place. And so we're conforming to it. Um, and offering to go from one over one to four over one on the bathroom windows is just, you know, it's a cherry on top. So I thank the applicant. Thank you, Commissioner. And what about the panning? <laughs> yes. And what about that panning? 
<laughs> we'll make those windows even more, give them even more texture and articulation and, um, and, and contributes to making these appropriate. Okay, so Commissioner Shamir Barron, will you make the motion? Yes, I will. In the matter of LPC 2102194969 Park Avenue, AKA 961971 Park Avenue 101105, East 82nd Street, Park Avenue Historic District, a Renaissance Revival style apartment building designed by Pickering and Walker, built in 1911 to 1912. The applications to establish a master plan governing the future installation of windows. I recommend approval finding that the historic six over six double hung windows were replaced with black six over one double hung windows prior designation resulting in a near uniform appearance. That the proposed windows will recall the historic windows in terms of operation detail and the proposed, proposed six over one configuration will be in keeping with the configuration of historic windows often found at Renaissance revival style buildings of this type and age. That the existing smaller bathroom windows at the visible secondary east facade consisting of one over one and four over one double hung windows. Therefore, the proposed four over one double hung windows will set a standard for a more consistent configuration throughout the facade. That the proposed black finish will match the existing windows and the establishment of the master plan will support the uniformity of the building's fenestration over time. And Commissioner Goldblum, would you second that motion? As I unmute myself, a uh, second. Okay, Rich, will you call the vote? Chair Carroll? Aye. Commissioner Bland, who I don't see here in the room? No, he's he's gone. He's gone for the day, okay. Commissioner Shamir Barron? Aye. And Commissioner Goldblum? Aye. Commissioner Gustafson? Aye. Commissioner Jefferson? Aye. Commissioner Lutfi? Aye. And Commissioner Holford-Smith? Aye. Okay, with seven in favor and none opposed, the motion carries. Okay, that's approved. Thank you very much. And that thank concludes. You, thank you, Chair Carroll. Thank you. Take care. And um, thank you, commissioners, for your dedication and commitment as always today. And that's the conclusion of our public hearing.